Testing, 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 testing. Can you hear me? Yep. All right, we solid now. Hey, people. What's, What's up, bro? Paul? Nice to meet you, brother. Kev, it's an absolute pleasure. Ambria. Hey, Ruben. Hey to hear. What's up? Hi, Ambria. Ambria. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? We never we met before or no? I think it had to have at a show. Yeah, I feel like we met, but good to see you. You too. I'm feeling good, guys. Feeling good. Feeling good? Yeah, man. Stepping on the scale. I'm fat. Uh, <laughs> when I tell you, I stepped on that scale, and that scale was like, nigga. <laughs> we talked about this. To hear, I don't even do that to myself if I'm losing weight. I don't need no, like, oh, this actually isn't what I thought it was. I don't need none of that. Don't tell me. No don't talk to me. How much did you I... go up here? How much did you go up? Um, well, from birth, no. 200 and <laughs> I knew by the um that we wasn't going to get no <laughs> real answer. Right now, I'm, a, I'm about 10 pounds up, Ruben. Okay. But I know exactly what it's from. I know exactly what it's from. As everything. You take, as you take a sip. <laughs> everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. How much of that do you think is 7-Eleven hot dogs? Probably like three pounds. Are we are we eating the food at 7-Eleven? Whoa, whoa, what? whoa. Hold what? on. Have you not seen? Ambria. I, that's what I'm asking. We're Listen. eating it for breakfast, Ambria. We're eating it for <laughs> breakfast. I ate it for breakfast like, like four times, Ambria. Like he making it like I, I do this all the time. It was like four times. In a week? Like, in life? I got to ask. It two times in a row and then the next day made a video and ate another one. Oh, you ate it for the public? Ambria, I I was I was securing the bag, okay? I was locking in the deal with 7-Eleven. That was the whole purpose of it. Oh, okay, right. that's different. Okay. You gotta contextualize. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. Like Kevin he wasn't doing that. Cancel. He's lying. He's he didn't so lie. I, so, <laughs> so, do I need to bring the tweets up? Do I need to bring the contract up, Kevin? Is that what they I need pay to you to eat their food? Good question. No, <laughs> I ate their food to get their attention. Listen, sometimes you gotta put you the ate work their in. food because you were hungry. That too. Hey, real quick, Ron. What's up, yes, brother? Yes, sir. Hey, What's dude. I don't know if Tony Rock told you, I found your your badge from Montreal. Oh I yeah, have, yeah, yeah. Somebody show, sent me a picture of that. Yeah, that's funny. I, I, I I'd like to get that. Yeah, you should have that, dude. You should have. <laughs> it. I, I, I yeah, found appreciate it. it. I found it and I was like, I know this dude. I said, let me keep it. And then I never ran into you. So I got it yes. around here. Appreciate it. I was likely very, very drunk and lost it. Yeah. And uh, that's probably because exactly what happened. Somewhere I was supposed to be. But, yeah. you know, I managed. Yeah. Ron, you, you look like you're in protective custody. You look <laughs> like you're in that room <laughs> designed so you don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, my room oh, so is we can't cool. identify anything in the room and like now figure out talking. where you are. That's why. That's why I do what I do because there's other Zoom meetings that's not as fun as this, and I don't need them to know where I'm at and what I'd be doing. No pictures, no paintings. I try to move all different girls' things out of the shots and stuff. So we're here, Ron. Yeah. Ron Taylor, you're a black man during a pandemic. No one is looking for you. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what words can be used on here because we got Brother Kev, but uh, I'll tell you. These Ron, women, speak how you feel, man. We're at Tahir's okay. house. There it is. Hey, these bitches, they don't give a fuck about no pandemic. <laughs> they, don't on you. they don't give a shit about pandemic my ass. Where you been? I was struggling, trying to survive. But, you know, whatever. We're past that. Listen, you thought he was going to say ass or something the way he said that. You thought he was going to be like, man, I'm just trying to get a little ass. He was like, man, these bitches ain't giving a fuck about a real Hey. I knew by them glasses that some real cuss words was coming. <laughs> That's... But there's, I, you know, I always have to like say it's there are women in the world too. But to, to act as if bitches don't exist, that's disrespectful to bitches. They, they out here too. And them be the ones I be dealing with. <laughs> them be the I ones. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Zoom with the homies. We're gonna jump right into this one because it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, a couple of people may still pull up. I think we're waiting on one more person, uh, but we're gonna get it going for now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna jump right into it. 
Uh, first and foremost, we want to give a big shout out to Tony Baker. If you haven't got your tickets to Tony Baker and Friends, it's going down tomorrow. You need to grab that right now. You can go straight to his Instagram page or TonyBaker.com or TonyBakerComedy.com and grab tickets right there. Um, do that now. You are going to miss out on a fantastic show. If you don't, I already got my ticket and I'm going to have my face in the place. It's going to be a fantastic time. So with that being said, put your hands together for the father, the comedian extraordinaire, the writer, the actor, uh, producer of shows and a ton of content. Ladies and gentlemen, no stash, Tony Baker. (laughs) (laughs) Had to throw the stash in there, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Hey, Tony. Hey, right, thanks for doing my show, first and foremost. Yeah, yeah bomb. Glad y'all was thanks available to do on. it and such. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, did you say you finna bomb? Finna bomb my life away. I'm going <laughs> balls to the wall. I don't oh, even care. Purpose? <laughs> I'm not going to bomb my purpose, but I'm doing new material. And if you don't like it, <laughs> please like it. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to bomb it. <laughs> the, the, the other Kevin, he made a whole special of that type of material. So if he can do it, you can. Wow. <laughs> no, in a good way. Like he said, he didn't have time to work it out, is what I'm saying. And he oh, made a whole okay. special. Okay. I'm not saying about to ask y'all what y'all thought of the vaccine. I was like, hey, man, what y'all think of the vaccine? You see the video? There was nothing in the. Yo, everybody on the internet, there was nothing in the syringe. They was lying to us. The syringe, I saw it. I was looking and then they pressed it and there was nothing. <laughs> it was I said that video no less than 30 times a day. And I'm just like, I know, nigga. I know they're going to trick y'all into taking it. They ain't going to take it. <laughs> oh, you're not going to take it? You're one of those? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next up, uh, let's just jump right into that. Uh, somebody that is is completely for the vaccination. Uh, he's from Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. An amazing Please, writer. Buddy. Amazing writer. Crisp Please, and yeah. brilliant comedian. Actor extraordinaire. Uh, and just an all-around fun time, ladies and gentlemen. Start clapping right now. Please welcome back to the stage, Mr. Ron Taylor. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Perhaps. Ron, he looks like you were walking up to the stage. Yes. <laughs> clapping right now. I started to stand up. I do up. that for everybody. I do that for everybody. Y'all start clapping right now? You say start clapping right now? I say, yeah, put your hands together. I'll start clapping right now. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. You gotta give in the field. Kev is all about the energy. It's all about the energy. Like the energy Ron is giving me right now is I can't leave my drink around him because he's gonna drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink no more. Oh, that's right. You did. You did stop drinking. You did. Okay, yeah. my bad. I can't. I can't leave my coke around him because he's gonna snort it. Jesus uh, <laughs> no, I'm back in the game, dog. I'm drinking again. I I, I drank a few times. It don't feel the same, but that's a whole nother story. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you start drinking or stop drinking? Well, He's drunk I was now, mandated obviously, to Ruben. stop. No, I'm good. I think <laughs> it was mandated. They 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 kicked me out the drinking game. They said I was going too hard, so they retired me like Jordan. But now I'm back. Who's they? They uh the city of California or the state <laughs> of California they gave me gave me that hot Dewey. They was like, you out here. Wow, and I was like, I know, right? They gave me a trophy. I called it a DUI. You are I, true. Oh yeah. You said, no. <laughs> you said the city of California. <laughs> and then I, I corrected it and I said state. Yeah, just, you know. Hey, listen, you know. Ron, Ron got pulled over, and the cop was like, "You know, I pulled you over." He's like, "Ooh wee." <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and get in the back of my car, fam. Go ahead and get in the back of my car. Next yeah, up, ladies and gentlemen, fun. an amazing comedian outstanding writer. I can't name all the projects that she has written for and they've got Oscars and Grammys. You see her, the hair is always slayed. She goes on Instagram just to make you doubt your decisions in life, whether you made the right decision with what you put on or if you married the right person. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the hilarious, the amazing Ambria Allen. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. That was such a nice introduction. I, I try to do it. You got to give people the energy you want to get from them, Ambria. That's why I'm here. I appreciate it. I'm with you. I'm here. 
The hair is flawed, and it's 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 seven o'clock at night. Not flawed, flawless. Where are you going oh, you at go. seven seven o'clock <laughs> at night? And the hair is just out here outstanding like that. We don't have nowhere to go. <laughs> it's gotta look nice in the kitchen in the goddamn office. I, you know, I can't give up. I can't give up. We in December, no end in sight. This is this is me just just giving it my best. Just oh. giving it my best. You got a well, candle listen. burning in the background. Is that a candle back there? A candle. The I candle got some lit. fresh flowers. Some yes. Little, some holiday decor. You know, uh, you know, my mama watching this. So she, <laughs> <laughs> she oh, would be shit. very upset if I got on here and my hair was not right and it didn't look like. You and know. meanwhile, Ron is at a storage unit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm hiding out. I didn't have time to do my hair all the way, but I tried, you know. Yo, Ron's afro stay crisp. It's Man, very crisp. I ain't never seen his afro out of order. Never. Oh, oh, you you, you ain't watched enough video because I've, I've been wilding sometimes. Sometimes I wake up and just turn Zoom on. They're like, damn, and I put a hat on. But, you know, <laughs> I tried I've never seen somebody commit to anything as much as Ron has committed to the Afro. He's had that Afro since he moved out here. You talk about consistency? That's the most consistent brother I know. The most consistent it's black man I know Ron, right there. Him, him, and, him and Mikey Winfield. Yeah, yes, oh, yeah. yes, oh, Ruben. Yeah. Winfield commits yes. to the Afro. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's, not, it's, it's not a difficult thing. Just, you know, when you go to the barber, just don't do that. And then, bam, now you're here. I just don't get my hair cut. That's the extra twenty dollars I get to keep. <laughs> I get it. I get yeah. it. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, uh, phenomenal comedian, outstanding writer, had one of the hottest nights of comedy in Hollywood. Ruby Tuesdays at the world famous Laugh Factory. Uh, overall, amazing guy. One of the most approachable professionals I've ever met in my life. Um, I saw the way him and Tony Baker interacted and you see that sometimes you'd be intimidated, but I was like, hey, Ruben, I would love to do your show. And I kind of backed away because he has a reputation of being outstanding. So, you, you know, but he was so <laughs> welcoming, so inviting. And he was like, hey, man, don't talk to me. My assistant's over there. I was like, you right, you right. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, and he so, did it with so much grace, so much grace. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, an amazing, outstanding, phenomenal writer. Um, I mean, he's done things for himself and, and tons of other people, worked on a ton of projects, producer of this own night, and an outstanding comedian and gentleman at that. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Ruben Paul. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. What up, what up, what up, what up? Hey, you, you know. Yeah. Here's the thing about social media. You and Kev, well, I've never met Kev in person, but when I met you, I felt like I had already known you. You know what I mean? Because I follow whole ass Tony Baker, so I'd be seeing y'all. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> so when, when you came up, it felt like I already knew you, but I love comedians and I love comedy, man. So if you somebody who's serious about the art form and put the work in, you know, I feel there should be a place for people like that. Absolutely, man. I'm super glad to have you here tonight. And I appreciate how graciously you welcomed me uh, into your fold, man. Moving on to last but not least of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this brother is a comedian. He's a writer. He's a creator. He's a businessman. His business acumen is unmatched, unparalleled, if you will. Uh, he's a husband and a father, uh, outstanding writer and an outstanding comedian and an amazing friend. Ladies and gentlemen, he just hit 10,000 subscribers today on that app that has really bare minimum of content because it doesn't really officially launch to the 25th already 10,000 subscribers put your hands together welcome to the stage mr kev on stage yeah. ruben paul i just want to let you know i was doing this about being a great comedian because i thought to hear was introducing me and then he said you and i was like i take back my biz i just i want <laughs> expectation to be tempered uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here to hear. It's just a, it's just a pleasure and an honor to be here. <laughs> you know, what you're doing for comedy was doing with the homies and getting all these comedians some, some airtime and friends and fans. And I know you'd be tired. You know, you, you slip into that pig pen after these long nights and you, you ruffle around in that hay and you, you take what? a little nightcap of slop, but you do this for the people. What? <laughs> <It was> slop? <laughs> A nightcap of slop. Wow. A nightcap of slop. <laughs> Here's what y'all don't know. Like... We've been shooting since like 10 this morning, right? Kev still has on a leotard right now. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's funny to hear? 
I, because of Corona, I totally forgot today was Thursday. Like, it, I mean, and you didn't send me the flyer. So Melissa texted me. I had forgotten to do podcast ads. I came down here to do my ads. I was like, I'm going to do this Zoom with the homies, take a shower and be done. She texted me at 6.50. She was like, you doing Zoom with the homies? I was like, girl, no, that's tomorrow. She was like, that's the day. And I looked at my phone and I looked at your Instagram and I was like, oh God. <laughs> this hey. thing I just got home. I just home. got home. Just got Kev. When I tell you I just got home, I had enough time to take my shoes off and finish booking Saturday show. But that's Tony Baker's fault because I sent him the flyer to send to everyone else. You know Tony ain't gonna do no follow through, man. Tony's terrible. <laughs> Tony, he didn't tell me to send the flyer. You know, How are we supposed to put it up if we don't have Kev, it, Tony? Yeah, I mean, Tony, I said here, I sent you the flyer, you send it to your people. I said that, send it to I, your I people. Miss, I missed that part. I missed that part of it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, well, we here, you know what I'm saying? Shout out. But to I ain't even get to tell my people I was doing it tonight. We could have more people, possibly. Shout, shout out to, you know, black people just working together, doing it, positive energy. <laughs> you know? It's 2,000 people positive in here. Positive energy. Why. That's Listen, when, Tony, when God gave you talent, he was like, let me give him all of the stand-up ability. Uh, the business stuff, yeah. he's, not gonna I, I, trash, man. he's just I, not going to feel like doing it. Tony just don't feel like doing the other stuff. He just wants hard. to do stand-up. I forgot. It's very hard, man. I didn't tell my people I was doing it tonight. We could have oh. more people. Who, who watching it? Is that Tony? Wait, hold on. Is it me? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm muted. Like, when Tony, when God gave you talent, he was like, let me give Not you me. all of the stand -up. I'm muted. Other business stuff. Not me. He's trash, man. He's just I, not going to feel like doing it. Tony just don't feel like doing it? the other stuff. He just me. wants to do stand -up. I forgot. Who was it? It's Ruben. It's, it's Ruben's Ruben. old ass sitting up oh. there looking like Russell Simmons. <laughs> it was Ruben. It was yeah. Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> he was having the time of his life letting it happen. Unmute yourself, Ruben. Unmute yourself because I was muting people to go around to see who it was. And you just gonna call me out like that? You ain't shit. He was sitting there uh -huh. smiling like it wasn't him. <laughs> he was you know like, that nigga just like Russell Simmons. It's like I got, I know. I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was looking around like, mm -hmm. yeah, he was like, man, <laughs> it's been on for far too long. It went Wait, on but crazy. How, how did we just now start hearing it? Hearing it, Ruben, did you just launch it? You was trying I to, just, I just launched it. I just got it. Never mind, it's a whole long story, but I just got a text message <laughs> and whatever. All right, um, well, my bad though. I everything. forgot, I forgot to send out the flyers, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I got, it's I got news. They got it now. Well, listen, everybody here is a, uh, a comedian, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know that we can't get on the world like we want to to make you guys laugh, so we have to find other means to do it, like Tony Baker's and Friends uh, comedy events. So with that being said, mm -hmm. if you want to bless the comics tonight with a little something, they will be more than grateful. I would be very grateful of you taking care of the guests. So at this time, I'm going to ask all my guests to change your name to your cash app so people can bless you with a little shum shum. You know what I'm talking about? A little shum shum shum. Oh, snap. How do you do that? Shit. I got you, Ron. What, okay. What's your name, Ron? Appreciate it. Uh, comedian Ron T. Got you. All right. Pretty yeah. simple. All right. Christmas shopping. Who's done with it? Ambria, are you, you through? Yeah, I don't really do. We. <laughs> I'm the auntie that gets you like books. And <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Like, that is the worst. It's books, or I just write you a check. Like uh, I give I'll you take that. necessities. Like, what do you need? Because I don't want to give you money when I know you go. You know what I mean? Like, it's just let me meet your need. You treat your you family. I'm gonna give you. You treat so, your family I, members like the people on the street. Like, I ain't gonna give you no money. I buy you something to eat. I will buy you I'm something gonna... to eat. That's. <laughs> I buy you something to eat. So that's that's my policy. It simplifies my life, so I ain't gotta be running around like a white parent in a 90s <laughs> kids film like where's the toy i don't i don't have that kind of energy here's a hundred dollars you know and it's tiered it's based on how old you are who you are to me i give you some money or you know take this ta-nehisi coats and sit in a corner <laughs> and think about life <laughs> that's, that's what i do i can dig, I don't, it. I can dig it what about you Ruben? you done christmas is canceled this year man 
Oh, wow. This is it. Wow. This is hey. the worst year to cancel Christmas. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's all in the 2020 package. You ain't getting shit this year. It's, it's a wrap. <laughs> You're going to hit the reset bar. button for 2021. Everybody need to understand we're in a pandemic. So, you know, it's just love and hugs this year. Love and hugs? You can't even hug people in the pandemic. Hey, hey, you can hug your family. <laughs> it was, it's just love, really. It's just yeah, love. That's true. Just that's love. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't open love on Christmas morning. <laughs> you can open it in the card. I'm getting out cards. <laughs> cards are the worst Christmas gift. Cards I mean, are trash. Unless, unless they got money or checks in them. If, if you get a card a, with a. Yeah, no. some, a gift card or some cash. Who's still you can't. Writing checks, though? Who's still writing checks? When was the last time what? you wrote a check? Man, I remember when I, I used to join a lot of churches, uh, older saints would try to buy merch and DVDs with a check. I remember I got a check for $10 for a DVD. I was like, man, just, I'm not doing it. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. Even if I go to the bank to deposit cash, I'm not going to hand them the check. It's just too much. Listen, you still got that check, Kim? What it's you free. Doing? It's free. I threw the check away. I was like, man, come on. Oh my God. This this sound like this was before mobile deposits too. So you literally had oh, to go yeah. into the bank. Bruh, I'm not, I'm just not doing that. Just the whole setup of going to the bank and here, Kevin Fredericks. Listen, mobile deposits is the only reason that I cash those SAG checks that are like $2.13. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, I just let I let them expire. I'm not going, I'm not making a trip to the bank for $2.13. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not you gotta gonna let them build up. Then it'd yeah. be like twelve dollars, and that's when I deposit it. Yo. That's when I go when they build up. When I got a stack of them, the twelve, twelve dollars, the six dollars, the three eighty nine. Yeah. I go all in, just just shove it into the ATM. They always give you one back. Ball. We didn't like the way this one looked. <laughs> They do give it back. Yeah, re, re, re look at this one again. We ain't like this one. I mean, it's the same. <laughs> they I'm always sorry, do that relate. at the ATM. Like, nah, not this one. Yeah, do you look I've like never, a dumbass trying to figure out? Checks. <laughs> you never got those checks, Ron? Ever? No. I don't even know what, what type of work I would need to do to get a check that small. What what do you what are you they're, all doing that I'm not they're doing? Old, they're old residual checks, mm -hmm. you know, from, from any projects that you would have done. Oh, they must just say "fuck me" because I've, I've never, I've, I've, I've only ever gotten paid once. That's oh, you it. got buyout. You, <laughs> you the buyout. You the closeout buyout king. <laughs> I, mean, I just got paid once, but uh, uh, but I mean, hey, sounds great. Checks, so you guys are killing it, man. <laughs> they, they bought Ron's talent at clearance prices. They was like, <laughs> they bought Ron. From an outlet mall. Hey, you a dude? Come over here. Yep, yep, yep. I just a, saw a uh, picture of me on on fucking the, what the, the trumpet awards. Oh, the, the, the trumpet awards is that yeah, a show? Are y'all familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just on there. Then nobody called me. Then nobody. <laughs> I I just got a black. It's just my black head and a mask, and I look angry because I was. I was at the protest. Then nobody I was. Me up. Or nothing. I'm like, do I get like a, a fucking Pepsi Cola or something? I mean, I guess nope. it's for a good reason, a good cause, but it would have been nice. Ron, this is how I know you got an old soul, because you literally just said a Pepsi Cola. I haven't <laughs> heard of <laughs> He's going to go with the original name from 1934. <laughs> Pepsi Cola. When Chevrolet. You, uh, to be specific. <laughs> Chevrolet. You know, that's a Chevrolet. That's Chevrolet, a Chevrolet good car. Right they, they out of Detroit. That's the Motor City. That's Go there, give me a pop. A pop? <laughs> that's what we pop. say. Pop is reasonable. In the Midwest. Yeah, we say pop. But a lot yeah. of people don't know what you're talking pop about. Pop is reasonable. Yo, they, uh, I, I want to say something about residuals and then something about pop. I'm gonna need you not to point with the pick. The, the metal pick is that the metal joint. You you can really stab somebody with the metal pick. If you want us to focus and take it seriously, I'm gonna tell y'all one more thing. You know what I'm saying? You have that beard. <laughs> My son had uh uh his movie Little Rascal Save the Day was on Netflix and and they had the wrong address for us from SAG. So they finally got in contact with us. And they were like, yo, we've got all these residual checks from the last four years. Oh, wow. Couldn't get in contact with you. We were, I was like, oh, snap, this is going to be great for his college. They're like, yeah, these are months and months of checks from, you know, it was, it was in Singapore. What's your address? We got to get it to you. Like, oh, man, this boy about to pay for his whole school. It was 418 checks. 
$77.10. I was like, y'all, why y'all? Wow. It, it's it's just a slap in the face to climb like change. Five years of this was $77? $77? Oh. That's a lot of paper. That's we took the kids to the movies and called it a day. We was like, man, just forget your college, man. Just go, let's just go watch Coco. That's all you're gonna be able to do with this. <laughs> five wow. years. I know oh, I'm gonna get that day is, uh, it's soda, regional, and then pop. And then in New Orleans, they call it a cold drink. Cold really? drink? What is that? That's what they call soda in New Orleans, a cold drink. Never heard that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't get with that. I don't believe that. I think you got that wrong. <laughs> Look <laughs> it up, bro. That's, that's fucking dumb. Like a cold drink. So what do they call iced tea? A cold uh, drink. I don't know. I just a cold <laughs> sweet drink. Nah, I don't. I wouldn't call the people from New Orleans dumb because you know what I'm saying they, you know, that's the chopper water. But, I don't um, think they're dumb, but that's pretty fucking dumb. A cold drink is literally any frigid libation <laughs> that's not specific at all. Like, if you ask for a cold drink, I give you some Hawaiian punch. You, now you gonna be Hawaiian mad? Like punch. Hawaiian punch, <laughs> big trash as a juice. We should just yeah. need- why you say that? Because Hawaiian. it don't never get all the way cold. One, it don't never get super yeah, that cold. Is- that's fact. Yeah. yeah, that is. That's, that's weird. That's make that makes me think that something crucial is in it because it's only a couple things that don't freeze: gasoline, alcohol, <laughs> and Hawaiian punch. Everything else freezes. Tampico, else Tampico freezes. don't freeze. Oh, Did well, Tampico. We know, it? No, we know Tampico ain't. It come out. It come out thick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Come out like sir. Did you ever hear, maybe it was just in my area or maybe just city or my group of friends, but there was pig sperm in Hawaiian Punch? Nobody ever else? What? Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, maybe somebody was just fucking with me, but I, for years I didn't drink it because somebody told me pig sperm was in it. It could really be in there, though. My homegirl worked at a pig farm, a pig slaughterhouse, like a like an industrial size. She was killing she pigs? Was, huh? She was killing pigs? Yeah, yeah, she was over like the, she wasn't personally doing it, but she was over the operation. And That's she was telling me that she sell, they sold uh, the texture of the ground beef from Taco Bell is from uh, pig uterus. Mm. Pig uterus? Yeah, she said inside the ground beef is a whole bunch of pig uterus and that's what gives the Taco Bell flavor. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Oh, I don't believe that, it's crazy. Cause you couldn't call it beef if you had to call it beef and pork, right? I don't know, man. I'm just telling you what you told me. I ain't got all the answers. You have a lot of trust in these companies, Ron. You think they just a- lie. Ron just be believing everything. That vaccine was real. Remember the other thing, man? Come on. It was no, I just, just like, I, if you told me it was something like that didn't change what it would be called, then I'd be, if you told me it was plastic, I'd be like, sure. But you can't just put another meat in a meat. What if I'm Muslim? Like, that's that's super illegal. You would buy the plastic before the pig uterus? I mean, if you can't call it, this is our plastic taco, but you, you got to call it a pork taco. Like, you can't just put pork in it. How did we get here? Ethically, <laughs> ethically, it's wrong. But I don't trust it. I feel like they don't care about ethics or your religion or your dietary constraints. Well, can somebody Maybe. tell me what's inside the Jack in the Box taco? What Man, inside of that? Ruben, I love those things. And what I know. inside of it? What I don't know. Inside of it, it's mystery. Me. I heard it's. No, I, it's hope, I heard it's soy. <laughs> soy is a mixture of soy and beef. Is what I heard. That makes sense. Here's what I, what I like. Jack the Box didn't know nothing about soy. <laughs> Come on. It was Jack cheaper than beef. Soy. Come on. It was. Man. It was cheaper than beef. Listen, Ruben. Here's a, they deep fried the whole damn taco. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. <laughs> the tacos come pre-packaged, oh, frozen. Like hash browns, and they just drop them in the <laughs> fire. <laughs> and you, you can never trust- be eating deep fried lettuce under any circumstance. Right. Oh my god! <laughs> and you can't trust no taco they put American cheese on. Exactly, <laughs> that's my main. <laughs> that's my Damn, main I- issue. Jack and Bob was noticed, like, man, man, should we buy shredded cheese for the taco? And they were like, or we take the burger <laughs> cheese because we got some of that and just throw <laughs> that on there. I don't care. Like, I don't want to be. Thing. I don't want y'all to be doing this. I'd rather just slap one off. <laughs> I think. I think it was. It was made off of like. <laughs> hey, you can't trust teenagers to do this. Nah, you can't trust teenagers <laughs> doing this. 
<laughs> it's gonna be weed kernels in there, man. Like that's the biggest blasphemy. I'll take the fake meats. Just give me that shredded cheese on give the top. Shredded cheese. No, I, think, I don't think I've ever noticed cheese. that. I can't do the fake. Oh yeah, that's a cheese from a burger, Ron. That's cheese from a burger. They just. I don't think I ever got a taco from Jack in the Box. <laughs> that's that's why I never like got them because of that. I was that's like, sliced cheese. I'm out. I'm a taco. Wait, 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 Tony. You've never tasted the Jack in the Box taco? I tried one, but I I, I looked at myself in the mirror for two hours. After <laughs> that, you know, it had the sliced cheese on it. I had four of them last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. I wasn't <laughs> proud of myself, but nobody knew where I was. I had went by the office. I was like, I'm hungry and I'm alone. I got me an oil chain. I got me four tacos. I, I ate got them. me an oil chain. <laughs> I vacuumed out my car just to make sure there was no uh, lettuce remnants. And I went home. My wife was like, are you hungry? I was like, I had a snack. Oh, a snack. Huh? I, listen. They saw you pull up at Jack in the Box, order those tacos. You came to the window in the Maserati. The dude looked at you like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he looked out the window like he looked you at you, he put the bag down. He said, what's going on at home, bro? Like, talk to me. <laughs> I like Jack in the Box. Nothing's wrong with Jack in the Box. I never had the tacos, but everything. they got everything. They got Chinese food. They got yeah. churros. Wait, wait, wait. They That's the problem. Here. That's the problem. How are you? How are you criticizing Kev and you eat 7-Eleven hot dogs? That don't that mean- part. Come on, man. For breakfast, Ruben. That, that part. For breakfast, I ate the breakfast. the box. It was three o'clock. It was, it was 9.30 when Tahir was eating whole <laughs> hot dogs. Kev, <laughs> okay, first of all, everybody that says something about it, Ruben, Kev, Tony, fuck you. Uh, that's that's all y'all. That's number one. Number two, because y'all act like y'all ain't never ate from a convenience store. First of all, if you've ever had Quick Trip before and and Seven Eleven, those hot dogs slap and 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 when you need them to in an emergency, they come through in the clutch. And, so oh, no, 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 don't say that. Don't say that. Pizza. Don't don't diminish it like it's emergency food. Damn it, Seven Eleven's good. That's it. Come on, Ryan. I should have I should have been there to defend you, and I'm sorry that I was just that, that, say, that I where you was down. you at 20 minutes ago, Ron? I'm Se sorry. I, I, when, when all this shit broke out, I should have been there. Best chicken wings. <laughs> what Listen, what Ron, you'll say they up there. I'm not gonna I don't feel like getting yelled at. No, Ron, I'm with you, Ron. I, I wouldn't say best, but their chicken wings are they're solid for uh, for convenience. I have a question. Spicy ones. Wait, whoa, 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 hold on, Amber. Hold on. I'm sorry, Amber. I just have to say that. <laughs> You dirty bastard. You talked about me and those hot dogs and you were eating the chicken wings? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. First of all, uh, you the hot dog, the greatest crime of the hot dog was the was the time of eating. If you right. had a detective on the case, they would have been like, hey man, looks like he was uh, eating 7-Eleven hot dogs at 9.30. That sounds off. They would have wrote that down in their little detective notepad because that is off. Nobody's eating hot. 7-Eleven was like, hold on, wait. We, they just stopped rolling. We don't really sell them. Hey, listen. He, he fresh off a murder. He fresh off a murder. Fresh off a murder, man. <laughs> hey, listen. This is the craziest part. This is the craziest part, right? So I did this three days in a row. On the third day, when I went in, Buddy was like, two hot dogs. He already <laughs> To hear, I would have died right there. I would have turned around and left. Yo, that's zombie apocalypse food. That's the only time you're going to No, eat. why are y'all not saying that? Are they Yo, we, like there's a hot, like there's a sweet place to get a hot dog from. Like, like you got to go to Roof Crest to get a hot, it's a fucking hot dog. It's, 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 it's not very complex. You can get a hot dog from a nigga pushing a cart. He got it from 7-Eleven. It's Those the, are it's amazing too, Ron. I agree, Ron. I agree. I Yo, agree. the street taco, no health department. Yeah. I don't even know what they are cooking that thing on. And there's like a car battery under there, a generator outside of the Staples Center. I'm like, bacon, <laughs> this thing been outside for six hours? Two. They call it a danger dog. It's called they a do. danger dog. Yeah. But you sure. eat that at an appropriate time. Thank so you. Do. To hear you, you when well, we brought this up, you led me to believe that you were eating breakfast at 7 Eleven. I didn't know you were eating the hot dog for <laughs> breakfast at 7 Eleven. That's the beef. I've, def I've defended this many times. Breakfast. We should let you know it's some bullshit if you don't have to defend it a bunch of times. <laughs> breakfast is literally any food, you're literally just breaking the fast 
after sleeping. The fast of not eat, eating because you were sleeping. It doesn't have to be a no, sausage, egg, and biscuit. It does it not have to be breakfast foods, but I think there are certain foods that you can't eat for breakfast. I'm with you. Them. Now, Ambria, I don't know if you know this story. We talked about this a lot on Zooming in all day. We were on tour. We were Shut on up. the Shut airport up. shuttle, Ambria. So here was eating a brisket sandwich at 3.30. We were like, the, the, the driver was like, hey, man. A.M. 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 Where do you get a brisket sandwich That's not bad. It Here's was from the, the day before, Ruben. It was from the day before. He he held on to it. No refrigerator. Left you it out in the room warm. Your whole entire life. Don't you sit up there and tell that bold face. Got him to. <laughs> hey, here's my We space. definitely had a refrigerator in the, in the room. We had a refrigerator in the room. Here's the thing. Now, it's Tony would never defend me. But Tony Baker is the same way. I'm very... Frugal when it comes to food. If I don't finish it, I'm taking it with me. I'm going to eat that food. I'm not letting it go to waste. That's all I did. I had a brisket breakfast sandwich. That's all no, I did, people. <laughs> there is no such thing to hear as a brisket it's, it's no breakfast such thing that sandwich. You, it's no such thing yet, Tony. Now, somebody's watching this, and they're going to be like, you know what? Brisket with a sunny side up egg don't sound oh. bad on the croissant. And they're going to make that happen. And it's going to be thanks to your boy. Look at Kel's face right now. Look, because he's thinking about it. That savory barbecue sauce on that yeah. hickory brisket. Yeah, you got this sunny side egg just running I'm over a little bit. And you got that buttery flaky <laughs> croissant. Just smash it. All right. Tonight. Take the direction down. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Age, Keep Age going. Cheddar. But, but you, yeah. ate this, you ate this on a shuttle on an airport? <laughs> shuttle! I was embarrassed, <laughs> Ambry. I was impressed to be with him. The, the driver was like, man, hey, man. The here, you ain't got no food order. etiquette. You ain't got no food etiquette. There's None. certain things. I'm not going to be mad at you for having the brisket <laughs> sandwich, but you can't be eating no fucking brisket sandwich. Okay, you know what, Ambry? You just reminded me. Detroit, Michigan, 2018. It's 515. Me and Tony, we go to a breakfast spot. Hey man, can we grab a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? To here, come around the what? corner. Two chili dogs. Uh, here, to here. <laughs> something he happened to Kevin's. <laughs> Looks like something happened to Kevin. You mute him. <laughs> something happened to his audio. <laughs> we gonna, we gonna wait this to see ridiculous. if he can fix it a little bit. So he Let's came around the corner. Guys. Let's talk two about, chili uh, dogs in his hand. Two chili What's dogs. Wrong with Let's that? talk. Let's talk about I've done Georgia it so politics. Many times. I've huh? done it so many times. I'm from Detroit. I'm on, on the way to school. Give me two of them things. Just that's what's wrong with that. And you went to a restaurant and asked for peanut butter and jelly. I don't even think they do that anywhere. But Ron, you said on your way to school, you are a young person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he was 35. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell y'all what it is. Let me tell you what it is. I stick to my roots. I'm a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a <laughs> rich. I'm gonna be eating rich, eating top ramen because I'm a real nigga. You feel me? Tony All Baker right. and Kev on stage have let money change them. We went to New York and we were walking around. We went to go get something to eat. Tony Baker and Kev on stage. Stage thirty-six dollars. Kev on stage and Tony Baker spent thirty-six dollars on one deep fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Thirty-six dollars a piece. But they talk about me. That's a lie. You're just That's lying. You That's not true. You're lying. Listen, listen. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to you, tell you is these you niggas right buy. here <laughs> spent thirty-six dollars a piece, and they both had three peanut butter and jelly sandwich, fried, deep fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's just. That's oh, y'all ain't got nothing to say um, for yourselves. They just, just called you a liar with no hesitation. Stop muting us, man. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> those those peanut truth, butter Tony? jelly sandwich were grilled and they were expensive, but that was at the uh, the Chelsea Market. All the prices was ridiculous. You talking about New York? Yeah, it was at the peanut Chelsea Market. Jelly was like seven dollars or something. So here where'd, just you get 30, where'd you get thirty six dollars from? Because he's a liar. Lie, 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 lie. He's a liar. Lie. Do trying to oh, bail us out me. I lie. Let me let me clear here. Let me let me just say this jelly sandwich. Let me say this. Let me say this. Okay. First of all, 7-Eleven is always emergency food, usually on the late night or a desperate road trip. 
when you are in the city, which to hear was <laughs> in a city full of breakfast options, he goes in there consecutive days and gets <laughs> two hot dogs apiece. Now, no disrespect, hot dogs are great, okay? No disrespect <laughs> to hot dogs. I've never in my life, hood or not, had a hot dog for breakfast. When I was a kid and I was like, can I have a hot dog for breakfast? <laughs> Boy, sit your ass down. You can't have no hot dogs for breakfast. Wait, 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 Nobody's wait, wait, wait. doing this. TB, have oh, you ever, have, like if you didn't have bacon or sausage, you've never taken a, a wiener and chopped it up? In, in That's no that longer a hot dog, Reuben Paul. That oh, is omelet no, meat. Dog, omelet no, meat. dog. Omelet <laughs> meat. I agree. <laughs> if you chop it up, it's an ingredient or a side. Exactly. Ambria, you too. Ambria, you gonna turn on me too? Oh, wow. no, no, no. You That's niggas funny. is different. <laughs> You niggas is I tried to help you to here. I tried to Wait, hold on though. Thank Honestly, you, thank you, Ruben. Ruben Ball you has the only a good real point. one on here. You and Ron Ruben Taylor Ball the only real one on here. Trying to Let tell you. you Ambria, Ambria then start hanging around the white folks and she just start yeah. getting her hair blown out at, at blow places like the, the, the places where they only like wash and blow dry your hair. She'd hang out at the dry bars and she didn't change. She didn't forgot where she came blow, from. Blow places? I forgot <laughs> the name. You know I more about doing. women's uh, hairstyling than it's blow It's a dry places. bar. No, I don't. Why? I don't go there. I don't go there. I'm all natural. Okay? You, you see this don't have to attack me here because you eating hot dogs for breakfast. Any How is a hot dog wildly different from a sausage link? That's what I was going to say, shape. Ron. If you really think meat. about it, it is it's, it's a similar situation. The, the size a bun of, is a biscuit. It's, it's how many? Is how many of y'all have put a sausage link in a bun? Exactly. <laughs> Listen, first of all, I've done it. I've done it. I'll Listen, do it. I'm you, talking about <laughs> breakfast sausage, not the Italian if sausage. If you consider, if you wrap a, a sausage link in like a silver dollar, like the, the little small pancakes, the silver dollars, you wrap that and you take a bite, it ain't no different but that's a pancake, than a baby hot dog. Though. Pancakes a baby and hot dog, dog. buns are different. You're talking about different. breakfast items. You're talking about breakfast items. To and here. Every, don't do this, because I thought you, we were cooler than this. I we, thought we are cool. I'm, trying, I'm wow. trying to establish some rules. No, here. Here. Judas, oh, you switched shit. up on me, you Judas. To for here. what, for some <laughs> silver? To you here. did this for some silver? You let that white man get you out for some silver? This is how I know I, you know you in some bullshit when you just start saying crazy stuff. <laughs> no, what the, because the blackness in me is like, man, yeah, but he right about the white man stuff. What the hell you been doing with the white man? I, I forgot what side it was on because the white man. It was like we were shame. going around Hotep Corner and it was like, let's, <laughs> let's, let's bust to you. Let's bust to you before we get there. To here, when you had the hot dogs, Inside, <laughs> how did you feel? Did you feel proud? Before you before you answer to here, I want to add this to you, Ambria. You think he had orange juice with his breakfast? No. A 20 ounce of cold, crisp Dr. Pepper to wash down the breakfast hot dog. I don't, I don't, see, care. I don't see no look, problems. Look at me. I don't see I don't no don't problems care. with it. I'm so I confused. Don't care, nigga. I don't care. Ain't no, what, what I'm supposed to, if I'm going to eat what I'm going to eat, I'm going to drink with that what I normally drink. But if you calling it breakfast food, why didn't you grab orange juice or apple juice? That's what you drink with breakfast. The juice got as much sugar as the soda. It well, does, but would you have, would you have a Rudy to be fresh and fruity and a Pepsi Cola? <laughs> would you, would you? I, Amber, I would. I bet, you know what, to hear. I bet when you wake up, your stomach, when your body gets to 7-Eleven, your stomach's like, God, dog, man, can you just have a smoothie every once in a while? We all got to go straight to lunch work. We just want to get, can we get some water going and a vegetable? We got to go straight to soda and dunk on hot dogs, nickels, and man, hey, everybody out. Yeah. yeah, he's at 7-Eleven again. Lunch shit. Your breakfast body is like, whoo, another day. We're going to take it off. Enzymes. We need more enzymes. It's like you know, the Kev, football defensive squad is staying on the field the whole game. Like, come on, offense. <laughs> here's the crazy <laughs> moment. You buying food from a place that ain't got a cook in sight. There ain't no cook nowhere. No. Eleven. Okay. Ain't no chef. See, it was made Ruben. by a cashier to here. See, Ruben, Ruben, you acting, you acting like the white man. You judge the book by his cover. You don't know just just because that brother is skilled 
at, at, at register activity does not mean he did not begin his, nah. his journey at culinary Hello? school. You don't know that, <laughs> say that, say that. Walk. You don't know his walk. You know what I'm saying? You're judging a book by his cover. And, and um, I won't stand for it. Gotta, you got a line. You go to 7-Eleven, you go to 7-Eleven, you get one of those pizzas, okay? That's going to be the freshest pizza yes, you've ever had in your life. Pizza? Pepper. Ruben, he buying pizza by the box at 7-Eleven. I That's didn't the even only know way they sold it fresh. by the box. That's the only Yo, way to get it fresh. Just... You buy it by the box, you got to buy the whole pizza. I expect so much more out of you, Kev, because you seem like a well-traveled guy. And it's just like, do you know in like... In Asia, it's a straight up restaurant. Like Seven Eleven, they got home ramen machines. Like you, a bowl of ramen come out. It's yeah, a convenience Ron, store and I a know. restaurant. But in Glendale, they're they're selling candy and lottery tickets. And to here is like breakfast, please. Is there a table I could just? I would just like to dine in. They're like dine in. There's, what? I love it. Mostly people I come here it. for coffee and pick me ups. He's like, oh, I like my rewards card punch, please. You yep. see, that lets me know that you don't even know because it's on your phone. I only have to get it punched. I just scan it, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe no one's called these things a glizzy yet. Do y'all know what that that's a thing? I I, I don't I don't know. I'm not from the region where that that's a new thing to me from Twitter. I didn't know that until it's an East Coast thing. It's a it's TikTok, a, but here's the thing. A TikTok thing. My daughter told me that it means something different. Like it, at one time, it did just mean hot dog. But the same Why? way Ratchet transformed it to something else. Now Glizzy is something else. And I didn't know it until people were like, okay, Glizzy Goper. I'm like, yeah, I'm on here with the hot dogs. <laughs> My daughter was like, you don't want to be called that. I was like, why not? She was like, it don't mean the same thing. I was like, what, what you mean it don't mean the same thing? She said, it means that you like to put stuff in your mouth from other men. I was like, oh, is that what it means? Mean? Well, that's going to happen. That comes with the territory when you're eating tubular objects. But why was it ever called <laughs> a Glizzy? I don't it? know what uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what Lizzie does Lizzie from. mean? Like it's I tried to find out like it's so much content if you like hit hashtag Glizzy and everybody like oh this is so funny and I'm like I don't am I am I old? Yo, am Ron, you, the visual of you in your room with like the whiteboard up, okay, Glizzy, it's on TikTok. All right, I'm now, telling you, okay, I see New York, I've seen DC. You got a calculator and stuff. You look. Think. It's, I don't get it. Glizzy, it's like it's, it's it don't sound like a dog or hot or is is that a brand? It's gotta it's it's gotta mean something, right? It's just glizzy. You can just rename food. We can you can just turn French fries eating opals. What? Why the fuck would you call French fries opals? You don't you don't do that. You can't just rename shit because you feel like it. And you the shit on TikTok. I'm not going for it. Fuck Glizzy's. It's a goddamn hot dog. You can call it a dog, a wiener. Don't call it a wiener. The Glizzy. Don't call Yo, it a wiener. Ron is upset about it. Right. I don't like being left out, you know, and I'm just, I'm so behind on all this TikTok shit, man. And the dances, they come and go so fast. When, when guys get out of prison, when people get out of prison, after doing like 20 years and they see the world where it is now, they sound exactly how Ron just sounded like that. What, what the <laughs> fuck is a cell phone? The fucking buses, you're getting on at the back. Niggas got cars driving themselves. Nobody told me shit. I'm still wiping my ass with toilet tissue. Y'all got wipes now, nigga? When I went to prison, TikTok was a watch sound. Now it's an app. <laughs> they Man. had a black president? What they have a black president? <laughs> I'm just so behind. People doing slow motion shit to the same song. I'm like, what does it mean, man? Was it about dog? No, fucking help me. <laughs> but you know, whatever. I'm, I'm gonna try so I can. I'll be on TikTok eating fucking glizzies, I guess. <laughs> wow. In slow motion. You so defeated, <laughs> bro. Like the internet just beating you up every day with new. new I got things. one more question. Don't get mad to hear. I got one more question. Was the hot dog beef or pork? Oh. You don't know. <laughs> you know I don't know. You know I Stand don't know. No, no. You're an assemblage of animal parts. Raccoon hands. Because at the end of the day, 
a hot dog is whatever's left over. They 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 take a, a sweet broom and they just push it into that thing. It don't matter what it was. It's bad for you, Ruben. It's bad for you, but it tastes good. I put mayonnaise, mustard, a little ketchup, and personal pickles on that hot dog. And personal I put mayonnaise on a hot mayonnaise dog. Mayonnaise on a now hot this, dog. I, I ain't gonna hold you to here. I am with you on mayonnaise on a hot dog. Mayonnaise Fire. on a hot dog. Love it. Fire my nigga. Fire. Hmm. We'll see. Fire. Wait, we got to go back to Ambria's question. <laughs> he asked you after you ate the hot dog to hear, uh, okay. were you proud or how did you feel? She asked, Ambria asked me after I ate the hot dog, how did I feel? I have one answer, a one worded answer as a response. Four. <laughs> hey, dog, you was living your Four. best life. I was you gotta explain that now. And is that not the goal when you eat? It's to not. be full, I was to be full. Satisfied, I think, is is different than just being full. You'll never be satisfied. You'll never be satisfied. Here's the thing though, you're not gonna get full on something you're not satisfied with. If you eat something that's disgusting, you're gonna keep eating. Yeah, you hey, can. Tony, Tony, hey Tony, you shut up. I'm here. sick of your grass eating ass anyway. Okay. <laughs> you don't talk in this conversation until we start talking about salads. Like I was saying, Ambria, you're not gonna keep eating nothing that you don't like. If it's not satisfying to the taste, you won't keep eating it unless you're on an island and you ain't got no other option. You man said like, I'm an this. I said island. Okay. The I'm nachos at 7-Eleven, great. Sometimes I take the dog and I run the, the the nacho cheese and the chili on top of that motherfucker. Sometimes I just do the chili, take the onions, mustard that bitch, 7-Eleven Coney Island. I ain't gonna hold 7 -11 you. 7-Eleven Coney uh, Island. To okay, hear. we about to start a GoFundMe for you. Uh, <laughs> 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 I ain't gonna stuff. hold I you. A lot it. of times in my life, I went to AMPM. And they got the the cheeseburgers in the, you know, the thing in the foil. Okay, the yeah. foil. Let, me, yeah. let me full disclosure. I have eaten the AMPM mini burgers. I Boom. should clear out my ashtray with change <laughs> and go in there back in the day. Look at you niggas. Play me. And now look at you. You're seeing the light. Well, yeah, now for breakfast to hear. Now for breakfast. Ambria, Ambria, Ambria. Time don't matter when you real. <laughs> I'm a real nigga. I don't, I don't, I'm not a slave to nobody's watch, nobody's clock. I live my life how I live my life, queen. Yeah. You think yeah. I want this? Your body is just out out there. There. <laughs> Man. You think I want this? It just, it just happened. happened. It just happened. <laughs> what was that? What are y'all referencing? I've seen that. Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. Uh, Fresh Prince oh, yeah. It's just strong ass Lee right. Rolls looking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love 7 Eleven, my favorite store. Great, great stuff. You can't tell me shit now, about 7 Eleven. I was homeless. That's all I ate for dinner. I would get I get them chicken wings or I get them nachos. This the trick. You take the, the nacho bag out the thing, don't open them, and then drizzle it. You dump the chili in the box and the cheese on the other side, put them jalapenos on that thing. You got more. And get me a big ass bud ice. And, and that was life, dog. That was 2016. That's all I did. Every day I <laughs> ate chicken and drank beer. <laughs> that was it. Now, let me tell you Dinner. something, Ron. I didn't mean to interrupt you. If you want to eat gas station food and a great culinary <laughs> experience, you want to go to Wawa. This is an East Coast thing. Wawa has smoothies, milkshakes, sandwiches, soup. When we used to be on tour in Philly, Wawa. you know, Philly, Wawa. Connecticut, off the Eastern Seaboard, we would be killing Wawa. Now, they Wawa had fire. some food. They had, like... I will go there for food. Like, y'all want to have lunch? Let's just pop by Wawa. That's all I want to say. If you ever have a chance to eat the Wawa um, sandwiches or their smoothies, please stop. Stop there and, and have that. That's and, a and, and Quick Trip, if you're in the, in, the, in, the, in the Midwest or the South, too. Quick Trip got a fire little pizza stand. You can get you a nice little sandwich there. Get some hot dogs. You know what I'm saying? A glizzy Terminator. We out here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're TikToking now. You got it, Glizzies. <laughs> and now, you know what? Wait, 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 wait. Before we go any further, I want to see 
what Ambria's bougie ass been eating since she judging all of us because everybody else admitted except for Tony Baker, but we don't expect him to because he's holier than that. No, I, I keep it real. Y'all cut me off when I was explaining. It. All right, well, I'm sorry. Well, let, let me pose the question and then Ambria can think of a good lie and then you can answer your <laughs> thing and then she can answer hers. Thank Ambria, you. what you what what are you eating with your bougie ass? <laughs> Sick of you. Now, Tony Baker, what, what, what were you finna say? Now, what I was about to say is the 7-Eleven food is good on the desperate measures tip. When ain't nothing else open, you go in there and get some taquitos, that's a good-ass time right there. But when all other restaurants are clearly open, 7-Eleven <laughs> should not even be a thought. Yo, my favorite part of this whole thing is Coco Brown is in now. She looks disgusted by the... <laughs> 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 Coco Brown, yo. Coco, Coco Brown. Hey, Coco. Coco, can you turn? Can you turn your um? Can you turn your camera to the side so we can get more of the screen from you? Oh, okay. Hold on, baby. All right. There you go. <laughs> okay, then switch. Uh, try to turn it the other way, and maybe the orientation will switch. Just flip okay. It. Turn orientation. It the other way. Way. Oh, right. Use the word like orientation. <laughs> I've been hanging around Ambria. You ain't gotta be mad at Is that me. better? Is your orientation locked, Coco? Is it locked on your phone? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, Is we it? just go back and vertical because yeah, it, I thought it was gonna change and then widen your screen, but it didn't. So we'll just keep you vertical. Yeah, her orientation. Oh, I'm is locked. sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine, and the hair looks amazing. We were just listening you're to right Ambria lie to us. <laughs> you say what? What is the question? I was asking what you were eating, Ambria. What what what's on your diet? What's on your menu? What's your trash? What's your trash admission? Where you you know you're not supposed to be doing that, but you do it from time to time. Bacon wrapped Oreos. Oh, I eat something bad that I'm not supposed to eat that I eat. What's your version of 7-Eleven hot dogs at 9.30? All right, here's a better question. Where have you eaten that you're ashamed that you've eaten that? Oh, I get these burritos from this place called Tacos Gallito or something like that. And they say they're chicken, but it's clearly just chewy meat. And it's <laughs> but whatever they put in the crema and the beans, I, the I crema just I worth that. Pass. The confusion. I just keep chewing past the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> it's I just had one last weekend. Yo, so if the crema is it. right, everything is right. If the crema What's is the crema? right, and then put, I'll slide in an avocado to try to make, to legitimize the burrito. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's I what bet your stomach is like, girl, you know that's avocado. I ain't gonna do nothing but what you just ate. You ain't lying to nobody but yourself. Let me, Coco, really quick. We're talking about trash food that we eat or places that may be trash that we get food from. Like, I love 7 Eleven hot dogs and pizza. So that's kind of what we're talking about right now. For breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Tony, you ain't have to do that, bro. Chill out, bro. Chill out. I'm just saying. Um, but, Tony Baker, you said nothing's wrong with 7 Eleven food if it's desperate measures, if you're in desperate measures. Here's the thing. I always live like I'm one meal away. I could be rich. I'm still going to move like a poor nigga. Y'all know this about me. Kev on stage, we talked today. I was like, bro, I can't relax. I was like, I don't want to get this new house. And then I can't afford it. So I got to like, I live like that. I live on the edge. Nigga. So I'm always going to eat 7-Eleven hot dogs. I'm always going to eat their pizza because I like it. And the shit tastes Here, you're so bougie. <laughs> like all your clothes, your shoes, your, all of it is so bougie. Music, so his car, his... His oils, his cologne, everything about to hear is fancy, but his diet. Yeah, That's just why say, your body I is like confused. eating bullshit. Stop lying. Your body, <laughs> you treat your stomach like, like poor black people, and the rest of your body, you treat like w suburban white people. You got <laughs> special lotion, you got kills for your hands. Your, your stomach is like, yo, we can't, where's the kills version of the food for us? You, you went, we used to be on tour. We was all trying to eat healthy. We was like, yo, we're going to eat at Whole Foods. See here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's wow. the thing, Kevin, Kevin talking like he knew about kills before I introduced him to kills. You ain't know nothing about no kills. I, I never said I did. I did. I'm not you bougie like that. You know what? What is that? I don't know what that is. Kills is basically $30 <laughs> hand lotion. 
So why would you put that $30 hand lotion and then take that same hand and wrap it around a fucking (laughs) 7-Eleven hot dog? (laughs) <laughs> it's, 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 it's all about balance, Ambria. Yeah, it's it's all about it. balance. Ambria, his hands are like, yes, 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 yes. No. We are properly moisturized. And then his stomach is like, I know we are not walking to a 7-Eleven again. This is the fourth time today we got $30 hand lotion. There's plenty of money in the account. Your body is throwing a revolt. You had to go to the doctor. Your stomach won for two weeks. You went to the doctor, and the next week you was eating barbecue chicken at 10.06. <laughs> in the morning? Yeah, in the morning. I was eating barbecue chicken. I was eating grilled chicken, and I just had some barbecue sauce to dip it in. But it was not barbecue sauce. Oh, that's different. That's I mean, different. it was not barbecue different. chicken. Coco, how you doing, baby? I ain't seen you in the Sundays. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm good. How you doing? I'm just I'm laughing because I got taquitos in a, in, a, in, a, in a damn Birkin right now, so I can't talk. I, wow. The taquitos are good, though. <laughs> and in a Birkin bag is a, the Birkin bag is a great contrast for the taquitos. They don't know what's going on. They're like, hold on. Is this a Birkin bag? Coco, what, no, what, what, kind of what kind of taquitos do you have? What kind? Oh, uh, the fuego, mm. the fuego, the fire. <laughs> Chicken or beef? Like literally, like literally, I have the little snack bag because I, my son, I put, I put him in his lunch, and then I put one in my bag, so I can't talk. I got <laughs> that's yeah. different. I that's... got blow pops in there. Yeah. <laughs> Not that's good luck. No. Your Birkin <laughs> bag is like, yo, we what is is happening right now? We are I got, the cheap, I got the cheap Spanish candy, you know, the cottage candy. You don't know if it's a corn or a papaya. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Mm-mm. I ain't talking. I can't talk. I can't talk. Cheetos and a Birkin. That's an album people, title right there. Money don't always change us. I ain't gonna hold you. No. Coco Brown got that Birkin and had that same diet. Like, no, nah, it's cool. These taquitos are hey. all right. That should why be the name of her next comedy. Why you here? Them wings the 7-Eleven be on point. Thank you, Cole. Thank you, Cole, because you were But for breakfast, though? Work. For breakfast? Not- the wings the 7-Eleven be on point, yo. They be good. When you just need something quick to snack on on the way somewhere, them choices off the chain. Come, come on, Queen. Coco Brown. Come you on, having that Queen. for breakfast? Breakfast at 7-Eleven? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you said? I think we lost, we, lost, we lost Tony. We lost Tony. We having some tech. He Coco have Brown, break. would you what? have 7 Eleven for breakfast? Yeah, I mean, I get my coffee from there. Would you have a hot dog with your coffee at 9 30? No, I'm going to get the little sausage link. I'm going to get the little sausage link thing. He would get the breakfast item to here. Yeah, I would get. I wouldn't have a hot dog. That's <laughs> jacking your stomach up too early in the morning. I would get the little sausage thing. Here's the thing, Coco. Here's here's, here's my thing. Okay, mm. what I've learned as I've got older, right, mm. and being around older people mm. is is one thing you have to do is stay active, right? If you don't use it, you lose it, right? You mm. see people and they hunched over like that it's because they become accustomed to just sitting down all day. Right, they sit mm-hmm. down, they watch TV all day, and they start hunching over, and that's what happens to their body. So what I'm mm-hmm. doing is just using the activity that the hot dogs will cause on my stomach every, <laughs> you know, every now and then, weekly, possibly, just to make sure I don't lose it. My stomach stays active. I I eat two hot dogs. You're not regular. Take, You're not regular. Listen, I am. No. I'm very regular. Listen, no. I take I take two. I eat two hot dogs, and, I, and then I shoot an activia. Right, I I had some activity, oh, you and that's how I stay. That's how I stay ready. You ever leave the bathroom? <laughs> yes, yes. Woo, yes. shit. So two Seven Eleven hot dogs and yes. a probiotic. Okay, you know what? You got a cast iron <laughs> stomach. And, and, and you and, and listen, and then I have coffee four times a day. <clears throat> you oh, are putting that about toilet it. through hell. Your <laughs> colon should be clean as a mofo. It is. It is. I went. I went for the uh, cause I I I had um diverticulitis and they had to do all the tests on me and when they they when it came to you know the calling they was like hey man whatever you're doing keep it up so i was like my nigga right uh, <laughs> my dog uh, right? <laughs> that horse meat be working huh 
Listen, this is what it is. This is Coco. People start getting money and they change on you. That's what happened to everybody on this panel, except for me and Ron T and Ruben a little bit. But Kev got some money, he changed. Tony got some money, he lost his mustache. Ambria lost, she got some money. It's that not ask Ambria when the last time she said nigga. She can't even tell you. She she she, she got a quote. <laughs> Said it like five minutes. <laughs> Listen, it's only, it only doing that. She only doing that because it's December and she still got thirty niggas left. Had, had this been July, <laughs> Ambria, say nigga twice to shut to her up. Just say nigga nigga. That's all you got to do. Is just say it twice. Oh, like Paul Mooney. Oh, he muted her. He <laughs> muted her. <laughs> <laughs> he he was she couldn't say it. Oh wow! Well, I might, I might change when I get some money. I don't know. So you know, my realness is by circumstance. It, I, I can't say that I'm better than uh, anybody who changed with money. I ain't got it yet. You know, I might eat caviar sandwiches I, or whatever rich motherfuckers do. Hey, caviar make you feel. That's something you cannot be feel poor and eat. We was in Napa eating caviar. There's just a certain yes, yes about uh, <laughs> caviar. <laughs> I guess. I mean, like, I, we're not even going to let the fish grow up. We're going to eat you before you have a chance at life. Ha! 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 Is it good? How was it? Is it good? How, like, how many of y'all been to crustaceans? I've been there. I've never been. I've been there. I've been. Okay. Amazing. Okay. I don't What like are they good for? Yeah. Garlic noodles. The garlic noodles are amazing at crustaceans. Oh, and the crab. I have those. Crab, I have crab those. too. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a big seafood person. I don't really. Know. Okay, you've been to STK. Oh, yeah, you probably no. can't. Now you probably picking, used to seven hundred. You, know, you, you can run down certain restaurants. That's when you know you're in a different caliber. Like if you've been to Ocean Air, STK. I've been to STK. I've been to all those. I've been to Bourbon been State. Nice. Ocean Air, Fogo de Chao. Yeah, yeah, I've been to Fogo. Ocean Fogo de Chao is up. Uh, Fogo de Chao. You still hauling much. about Ruth Chris? Your money ain't up yet. I, but, I bro, Coco, I'm, I'm hauling about 7 Eleven, so that lets you know where I'm at fin financially. Like, I love that. Means you must have a lot of money stacked up. I don't no, like that me. you're calling us got nothing. because we don't <laughs> <laughs> breakfast hot dogs from 7 Eleven. Like, it's ridiculous. Now, let, now let no. me tell you something somebody <laughs> watching this is gonna have the idea. Breakfast hot dogs. I think we own something, and it's gonna come out, and y'all gonna feel silly. Y'all gonna feel silly. And I mean, at four in the morning, I've had one of them bacon wrap hot dogs off the street downtown. But that's night, though, Coco. That's that if you was up all day, no, but you didn't wake up. That's different. That's a late night food, which excuses the whole thing. You had a, that's like post club food. Yeah, that's, okay. that's how that's how you ended your day. That's right. not how you started your day. I I ended. Listen, see what I don't what Kev didn't tell you is I ended the night with the brisket sandwich when we were on our way to the airport. No, no, yes, you did it. We, yes, I did. Because that we, was a lobby like, call. That was that was crushing your lobby, eye. Lobby call was three a.m. Kev to hear you brush your teeth and within ten minutes was eating brisket and you didn't <laughs> brush my teeth at that. the back. I brushed my teeth and at the airport because I knew I was gonna eat the brisket. He I had to go. I was, I was up watching sandwich. Forensic Files. I was up watching Forensic Files and I timed it perfectly. I said, I'm going to pack and then I'm going to heat up this brisket. I'm going to eat it on the way to the airport. It's going to be the perfect temperature because I'm going to let it cool down a little bit from the walk from the room to the shuttle. It's going to be perfect because you eat it too fast. You're going to be like, you're going to be doing that. I, I knew the perfect amount of time for it to cool down so I could eat it. That, that wasn't a breakfast brisket. It was just, I'm still up brisket. Damn, he slept and woke up and got the sandwich again. Y'all know, y'all know everybody on that tour went to sleep. Even when I was saying, what's the point of going to sleep? To him was like, I'm going to sleep. He went to sleep, woke up and had the sandwich for breakfast. And again, so you know, I've done that though. I've done that. Whatever I had for dinner, I had for breakfast. Thank and that's you, not Cole. my issue to hear. My issue was not that you finished the sandwich. It's that you did it on the airport shuttle. <laughs> listen, I, listen. I'm in I a place ready. to hear all my argument. This is all I ask for you. Time in a place. I don't eat no food better than you, but I have the dignity yes. to wait for 12 o'clock before I go to the 7-Eleven. You woke up with violence on your mind when you went straight to 7-Eleven. You left your house in Glendale. A nice, expensive, more expensive part of California. You drove the nice car you had, the Infinity, the old school, and you went past 
breakfast place after breakfast, and you pulled that old school in there with the leather interior and said, two hot dogs, please, and the Dr. <laughs> Pepper. And yeah. with $30 lotion between your knuckles, you said, my body, I only care what goes on it, not in it. And the cold part is the cashier was ready for him. Two hot dogs? <laughs> you know it, good sir. Yes, yes. Listen, listen. Oh, Tom, here's the thing. Now the 7-Eleven person's like, I got to get to work early because somebody keep coming buying hot dogs at 9.30. Them things ain't even cooked all the way yet. He don't know. His stomach can't tell. They, 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 they throw them on the grill at 6, my guy. Okay? Because right. the earliest I've ever been there was 7.30 and it was hot. So I know they throw them on the grill at 7.30. They throw away everything. They do inventory at 5. And then they start putting out the new stuff. They start the coffee at 5 o'clock as well. Okay? Did, did, you, so say, six, did you say grill? They ain't got no damn grill at 7 Eleven. It's, it's a grill. The rollers, they got the rollers. Yeah. That's it. Stupid. <laughs> the rollers is on the side of a them rollers is on the side of an old TV. They rolling down <laughs> all night. Wow. On the side Ruben, of why are you doing this, bro? I thought we was I'm I sorry, thought we was cool, bro. I'm sorry, T. I'm sorry, man. I just it's a rolling grill. It gets an even grill. It's the oh. best. Way to have a hot dog. You know what? Here's the thing, though. Wow. Here's the thing, though. My bougie balances out my hood. That's why everybody fuck with me. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm good your anyway. Stomach I know. Don't, your stomach don't <laughs> with you. They, it went to the doctor on you. It tried to, it had a whole case That was on something you. different. That was something different. That was because of nuts and little seeds. It said, diverticulitis is something different. All right? It ain't okay, nothing so when you, you, you went to the doctor. What the hell is that? When diverticulitis? When you is, went to the doctor, when, did they ask you what you what your diet is? Did they ask you what you ate? That's against HIPAA. They can't <laughs> ask you that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Tony, what the hell did you get me on? <laughs> I'm in pajamas, Tony. I'm on the East Coast. I'm chilling. I'm sorry. Can get on sis? Really? You know what's okay. funny? We've been talking about this the whole episode. The whole time. The whole McDonald's the whole hot dogs. Time. Man, Listen, about McDonald's no, no, hot they got me in the corner, but I ain't stopped swinging yet. You hear me? Because I'm a real nigga. I'm in that corner by myself. Ryan come in every now and then. He throw a couple punches, but then he dip out. Ruben, I can't tell what side he on because a nigga keep flip flopping. But I ain't Ruben is a martyr. He don't care. Day. Ruben is a soldier without a country. He just who is paying will kill Listen, the other people. Ruben is a Ruben is an hey. agent of chaos. He's the Joker <laughs> in the dark night. He just want to see the whole city burn down. Oh my god! <laughs> well, there's I, I, good points on both sides, guys. There's good points on both sides. <laughs> Ruben sitting there like, oh, you one of them. Listen, <laughs> and you remember in Gangs of New York? When, uh, when Leo went and got old boy, he was like, I'll fight whatever side pays me the best. <laughs> I just can't do the breakfast. Set. I can't eat at 7-Eleven, man. I can imagine and understand the whole time thing. It, it, no, eating a hot dog at 7 in the morning is not the most dignified thing in the world. But you know Rah! what? Damn it, if that's what he want to do, and, 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 and it made him feel the way he needed to feel so he could come and do his job, which I'm sure he did. He did, did he do know? his job. That but, part, but, now I can attest, on set both times, to hear was in his A game. He was ready to go. Him, that part, I cannot, he had. Now, he was if he would have stopped somewhere and got some fucking avocado on some, some toast and shit, and then he would have stunk it up, you know? So he know what he's doing. And I'll give that a pork chop in the morning. That's that's, that's delicious. I mean, me, like many times. Thank, thank you, thank you, Ron. Also, let me say this. Let me say this, okay? I don't <laughs> understand why I'm getting judged. If we can have steak and eggs for breakfast, why can't we have hot dogs? And in 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 England, in London, they have beans. They for do breakfast. have beans. They have and they're cold. Cold. And they're cold. Cold. Ooh. Kevin, we've been to London multiple times <laughs> together. We've had beans for yeah. breakfast multiple times together. And you judge me for this? No. Oh, you low down knows. scoundrel. Ambria, I don't know if you've ever been to London because I don't know if the white folks have allowed you to get that far from the yard. Okay. <laughs> but I like, tell you, so this. mad. <laughs> You're so mad. No, I low key. When I am, we went to London, we were like, right now. I am, give me the, uh, I am fuming. Okay. Everybody Amber, knows I, that London's food is shit. Yeah. Everybody knows. It is. It is. It is. Everybody so, knows. So bad. 
It is, it is so the worst. Bad. The and beans are cold. The other cultures there, and they would have. Yes, the beans are cold. cold, and the bacon Why? is not done. Oh uh, my god! And it's overpriced. They, their food is. Oh overpriced. my gosh, Ruben! It's out of this world. That's I'm like, how you know those was the original white people? Because <laughs> <Ambria, laughs> listen, shit. listen, Ambria, they were in London. Like their whole reason for colonizing the, the world was like, we can't keep eating this. We, if we have to kill some other people, I'm just gonna have. We need some. They was colonizing India for the spices. They were like, we got nothing going over here. Listen, this is this is yeah. exactly why they should have known that Columbus did not go to India. He was in search of spices. And hundreds of years later, England still doesn't know how to season their goddamn food. <laughs> yeah. That lets you know that the nigga knew he was in the wrong place. Well, he actually, nothing Columbus was Spanish. Yeah, I was about to say, Columbus was, from, was Spanish. Hey, man, don't but didn't he come from over there? But don't you know, know I get what you meant to hear, you know. Barcelona <laughs> right there, bro. You know, when we when we were in England, we flew to Barcelona for the $70 because it's all in the same area, bro. Don't do that. Don't do but that. that. I mean, <laughs> very Spain, Spain is different on the food tip. Ah, yes. you know what? You know what, Tony? Shut your, your social studies ass up, man. <laughs> and Kev, all First of a sudden, that's you know, geography. Kev, social studies is a totally different thing. It's a geography. Not, not oh sixth grade. God. Geography and social studies are all the same thing. It doesn't switch it to you. That you like, was that's years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I was in school, Ambria. Yo, you that's know that I movie where they, they had the, uh, they broke into prison to get the drug dealer, and he was like, $100 million. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know when this is over, Ambria is gonna call you directly. <laughs> Listen, first of all, Kev wanna act like act like he knows geography now. When he booked our first tour, uh oh, we, uh oh, he booked right, our child, first tour. I gotta go. I gotta <laughs> run. Uh, now you stay what? right here, Kev. What? Tell you it, Kev. It. Tell it. When Kev booked our first tour, we did shows Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Kev will have us in Vegas on Friday, New Orleans on Saturday, New York on Sunday. That's a, that's I ain't gonna hold y'all. I, I I I did I did struggle with the yeah. American. Yeah. And in all serious, we were just talking about this today. That's the well, y'all driving a plane. We were flying. Fly. We had oh, we, we had okay. Grand Rapids on Friday. Uh, or Grand Rapids on yeah Friday, Detroit on Saturday, and then Richmond, Virginia on Sunday. One time. We would get further from our home as the weekend went on. We we would end the weekend. I was flying. I remember we drove all them Listen, damn places back in the day. Also, I did not know that Louisville, Kentucky, was only an hour and a half from Indianapolis until we were there. We had did St. Louis, Chicago, and then went the other way. Then we got to Louisville, and they're like Indianapolis. And I was like, why is that on the sign? They were like, that's just an hour south of here. I was like, hmm, we should have done that on the weekend we were doing it. That? I had no idea Kentucky was that far up. I didn't know. I had never been to Louisville before. Wow. That's like I love y'all dearly, but I got an early ass flight, y'all. All right, Coco Brown. Go see Tony tomorrow. <laughs> I'll go see you, you tomorrow. You gonna be there too? Wait, before Coco yeah. leave, before you leave, Coco, I just want to say one thing. Tony Baker, put me before Coco Brown as God is my witness. Don't you do that to me as a man. I don't I don't know. I know where I told you to put me. I didn't try to uh, been on stage with Coco. And every time I went before her and I was like, thank God. Don't you, know that, Tony? you don't put me behind Coco Brown. I am not in a creative state. You let her go after <laughs> me. I don't need that on my, I don't need Coco Brown. Can't uh stay. I, um, I, I walk right back to my car. You do it to me. Coco Brown is a problem on that stage. She sure. is. Every time I see I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, honey. I ain't uh, Coco, to don't do that. Don't you do I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> it ain't been that. Don't you lie to me, Coco Brown. You're going to get on there and kill for 20 minutes. Talk about, well, I ain't even been on stage in four years. Don't you get up on this Zoom, Coco, <laughs> and act like you don't know. Even if you don't know what you're going to say, you're going you're gonna to have 15 minutes of fire, and I don't need it on my conscience. I don't need it. I got enough pressure right now trying to do new material. I don't need to do new. I'm going to tell you right now, Tony, you told me to do new stuff. You put me behind Coco Brown. I'm going to do the same set I did last week. I'm going to keep it this way. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not going to. I'm not. Thinking. You put me behind her. You're getting the same set I did last week. Made them. <laughs> it's gonna be your fault as a booker because I'm telling you, I'm coming. You comedian to comedian, as the booker and the promoter, I'm not ready to follow Coco Brown tomorrow. I don't got it. <laughs> 
If we keep yelling, Coco not gonna get on that flight. All right, Coco, I'm <laughs> telling you right now. Oh. As God of my witness, Tony Baker, it's up to you what happens tomorrow. It's up Coco, to you. Kevin, Coco and her pajamas, man. Kevin been real different after he back. got that mammogram. I don't know what they did <laughs> oh to him in that room. I have to go. All right, Coco, thank you so much. much. We'll see you You're tomorrow. welcome, baby. I will see you by right, Yana. I'll see you tomorrow after oh. my set. I'll see you. I'll see you after my set. <laughs> Tony, I'm not playing with you, man. Don't do it. You, it's all yeah, laughing. I've been, I'm, I'm dead I've been serious about that. A few times. Put me up first before you do that. I'll, matter of fact, let me bring you up. I'll start the show <laughs> off. I'll do warm up material. Y'all ready to have a good show? Don't you put me behind Coco Brown. Don't you do it. I'm not joking. I'm dead serious. Ha ha. No, don't do it. <laughs> oh, man. My eyeball. It's very hard to. Bye, it's, Coco. That's very hard. Say All bye. right, Coco. God bless you. I've been trying to say bye for tw since she got on. And yeah. saw her talking. She was like, what is this? Coco came in here. We like, were hey, talking about hot dogs. Hi, y'all. Talk to y'all later. <laughs> She gave Tony the okay, baby. Like, why you got me? <laughs> go ahead Coco, and go, Coco. We we try to let you, you muted, out. You muted, Coco. We can't hear you because you muted. You muted. You knew that. You oh, I'm just... sorry. I'm sorry. There you I, go. I, I, I feel like mother. <laughs> I feel feeling like auntie right now, watching the kids talk about shit I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you? Are you That's not here to Glizzy's? <laughs> That's what happened. Let her well, go, Ron. Don't ask her nothing now. Okay. Let her go. Let her go. Night, yeah. Coco. Anything you night, y'all. I'll yeah. see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Bye babies. Oh, man. <laughs> Tony, for real, man. I'm not. Listen. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm dead serious, bro. I don't need this. I never seen Ruben live. I seen Ron. I really don't want to do the show. But now that I see who's on the live, I'm like, God, <laughs> oh, man. And usually, you know, we're all comedians. We're honest. We, there's no comedian on the panel. But sometimes y'all like, okay, I can go after many of these people. <laughs> and sometimes you're like, okay, now, God dog, they got all these people on the lineup today. Shoot, I got this. When I saw the, and Tony ain't been putting the, the flyer up. So now I'm looking, I'm like, God dog, Ambry and Ruby. Okay, now Coco, Ron Taylor, plus Tony. I'm the host. Be fun time. Man, hey, put me up I first, Tony. I don't, just put me up first, man. Just put me out my misery. I would I would have quit. I would have saw the lineup. I'm like, man, I quit comedy. Man, <laughs> it's a lot, man. There's a lot of ego with comedy, and right now I don't feel at my best because I'm not able to work out as consistently as I'm used to. So I really don't be knowing, man. Shoot. I don't think none of us are really though. And then it's cold outside. You know, people. Be that's cold that that way. part. It's gonna yeah, mess up the energy of the, of the yeah. audience. Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you, as keep your distance has gotten colder. It's been you know, hard right? to warm the audience up because they're physically cold. My bad to hear. I said Ruben's still been performing at strip clubs, so he good. Oh man, I ain't been performing <laughs> up there, man. <laughs> I perform you know at a strip what, club. Cam? Yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask everybody this individually. Ruben, how often do you get up now? <sighs> Maybe once every couple of weeks. I mean, I've been on the road doing a little bit here and there, but when I'm back town in, in LA. It's hardly nothing, man. Mm. And if, you, if you count, are you counting Zoom? Are you counting Zoom shows? Nah, like a, like an actual like an actual stage audience. Um. Oh shit. Probably, if I hit the road, that's about okay. it. In, in LA, this is probably my first show in LA with an audience on stage. Man, welcome back, man. Yeah, man. Well, I'm thank you. To welcome back. I'm looking. Forward Ambria, to well, how often you get up? I mean, never. My last show was the day the governor announced the shutdown. It was me. The first shutdown? Huh? In the March. First, March 13th, oh, wow. I think. March that 13th. was my last show. Me, Chris Spencer, David Arnold, Aaron Thompson had a show at the Brea Improv. And they was like, <laughs> you know your nigga shouldn't be here. <laughs> like, uh, this is the end. That was you, my last show. Did you guys finish? I was in, I was in Minnesota at the House of Comedy and they canceled the Sunday show because of, of COVID. Yeah, they canceled the rest of the dates. Mm -hmm. Me and Tahir happened to have an off weekend. Uh, and I, had, I was supposed to be in New York for a Twitter event. And they canceled that. And they were like, well, you're still going to get paid. And I was like, oh, this is lit. Yeah. So we got to go home early. And that was it. That was the last time I performed comedy. <laughs> they just kept canceling my out. dates. They were like, April's out. 
Maybe I, by May. I was in I was in Vegas last month, right before Thanksgiving, and the governor of uh, Nevada told everybody to stay home the first night we started shows doing there. Uh, and, and people still, but people still came out. But the whole time you're wondering, am I going to get my full pay? You know, it's already 25% capacity. So yeah. you're already taking a pay cut right off the top. And mm. the whole time is like, let us just get to Sunday so we can get the full check. Because, you know, sometimes they're coming to you go, hey, man, we had to cancel the last two shows. So we're going to prorate. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with none of that. So we made it through the week, man. We made yeah. it through. I feel that's that. the thing that sucks about comedy right now. They're expecting you to deliver your same job, but just like you go make a 50% to maybe a, a three quarters less. But hey, man, you, <laughs> you like this, don't you? Like, I performed a few times. I did some outdoor shows. That was cool. Uh, Tammy Joe, I don't know if you guys know her, but Tammy. she does a, a show. I think it's called Magic Asphalt, and people are just in their yeah. cars and you're on stage. I did that like twice. That was fun, but other than that, I I haven't got no reps. Like I haven't, I ain't done no mics. Uh, it's just been paid shows. But normally I'm up every day, two three times a day. But that shit over. Stop. And that's the one thing I feel weird about. Like a lot of people are discovering my comedy when I feel like I'm not even nowhere near in my rhythm of like my normal thing. Like if I'm going up all the time. I feel great. I feel creative. I know I could try this joke out because you know it's top of mind. But like. Even when I'm doing old material, I'm missing a tag here. The premise yeah. ain't set up great. I missed the whole last week. I missed the whole punchline. Like the the, the the it was like a double punchline. I got home and I was like, How oh, did you end the joke? I, <laughs> I missed the part that used to really kill, and now I can't try that joke out again till mid-April. Yeah, I was yes, working. The world is different, so it's like a lot of the jokes are like, oh, sh like I can't even. I have to change the whole setup for this yeah. job. Because... It's just, I didn't realize, like I, I miss performing doing stand up, but I didn't realize how much I'd miss the camaraderie. Like I don't see Tony, I don't see Amber, I don't see, you know what I mean? Like that part of where you're always around mm -hmm. comics, you're always around live audience, man, that, that's that been the hardest part not to have that energy in your life. Cause I, you know, you perform five, six days a week and to go from that to nothing has been has been tough, man. Man, we used to hang out at Tahir's uh, Wednesday room, man. I we would just pull up. Well, before the tour, I was working out there a lot, and you know that little part of the comedy union, the little like courtyard inside outside. Mm -hmm. Everybody would just be up in there or in the little green room. We'd just be chopping it. Oh man, what's up? I ain't see you. How's this? Yeah. Now it's just only Zoom. But you know, it's funny. The comedy you... store was doing stuff in the window. Like you would you'd be inside and the people are out on the patio. That was fun. It got a little weird because like you really, that, that intimacy thing is, is, is you don't realize how important it is until it's taken away. Like I'm like, it's, yeah. it's, some, it's some wild, like racy jokes that I tell that it don't feel right yelling it outside to a, it's like, you, you, if I'm gonna say some crazy shit, I'm gonna be in and people there. I can feel the energy, but it was a fucking wall. It was like I was doing like jailhouse comedy or something. But yeah, yeah it, it, it was something. Yeah, man. Here, just but even that show is gone now. Man, what happened no. here? What do you do? You got the little stupid mic out, the tiny mic. <laughs> just stop, man. What is that? What is that? What does it it's do? To hear, to hear, I'm again. I tell you, you Gucci man. You, you're the reason the class didn't get no pizza party. You just be doing oh. stuff. The teacher get pissed off and turn the lights on and off. And it's you. It's just you being disruptive. You be like, oh, what? I forgot about that. Because he knew he wasn't gonna go, Ambria. You knew he he's in detention for the pizza. Yeah, party. so he's so he gonna make sure nobody day. have no pizza. Listen, I put on a black shirt to match with the rest of y'all. I was trying to be a team player. Y'all have set up here and you've attacked me in 7-Eleven <laughs> for over 45 minutes and I'm still being a team player, okay? You think I want to eat 7-Eleven hot dogs? It's because yeah, of you I'm do sad on the inside. I'm okay. sad on the inside, okay? Uh, I don't want to eat that, but I'm doing that because it's comfort food to me. It reminds me of a time when it was less chaotic. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Your chains are hey, popping. We just, now, Your chains are popping. They popping now, though. You, you see that. You see that. 
Seven Eleven has always been fancy to me because we didn't have them in Detroit because the insurance was too high. Oh, and then Dan Gilbert on, bought all of Detroit, <laughs> and then now we got like two Seven Elevens. But there was no Seven Eleven in the Detroit city limits. They're Dan Gilbert, the the Cavs owner, he bought a lot of property in Detroit. Oh he's yeah, he Detroit. might as well be the mayor of Detroit. He is. Oh, he, I don't know if he's from Detroit. Yeah, he is from Detroit. Isn't oh, he the God. one that paid Rosa uh, Rosa Parks' house? He paid the the I'm back charge. Maybe, but oh, he's he put a, her, he he's put her in the uh, apartment and paid for her apartment or something like that. Rosa okay. Parks, yeah, because he's he, he's the same guy that owned like the Little Caesars and he owned like all the property downtown, like all this stuff. I, don't know if he owned the Little Caesars. Caesars. <laughs> I just know the, the owner of the cat is from Detroit. To hear, man, what? Shut <laughs> Oh, God, to hear. Oh, you made that up. To oh, hear, that's man. bad, man. That's a big fact to just make up. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Oh, nobody says it. I was Ambry. I was literally like, "Hold on, did, did, that, did his family help wrote the part? Maybe it was family money." And then you just be saying, "I, I I've known you for so long, and I, I don't know why my, my brain will not process why you lie for stupid reasons." So I'll be still getting caught up in a, a lie because it just is. I don't like. Maybe I'm to hear lies be so wild. I'd be like, maybe I'm I missed something because that. <laughs> I feel like that should be common knowledge, but I didn't know Dan Gilbert was from Detroit, so now I'm off my bearings. Okay. You said it's like two truths and a lie. You just do you do a whole bullshit drive by, and you got to together. Listen, what? I was I was I was honestly I was thinking of Mike Illich. Mike Illich owned all the property like down. He, he owns, owns the property. He's the one Caesars. that paid for Rosa Parks' house. He owns Little Caesars. He owns like in the arena, I think. In the arena down there. That's what I was thinking of. I was thinking of Mike Illich. So I just got the name wrong. And all honestly, that's what I was thinking of. I apologize. Man, shut up. Yeah. Man. <laughs> also, yeah, I want to say this about Ambria before we before the show's over. I had booked Ambria to do Kev on stage and friends, and I knew she was a big deal. So here's like, nah, bro, she'd be big deal. She hit me. She was like, hey, Kev, I can't do it. Literally, the next time I saw her name, it was on writing credits for the Oscars. I was like, God, dog, she, Jesus Man. Christ. Why did she wow. even agree to do my show to begin with? You knew you were better than Kev on stage and friends at the Comedy <laughs> Union on a Wednesday. You shouldn't even been over here with us. You was working on the Oscars, girl. What I mean I, 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 is politely being like, oh, my God, I have to cancel because I have to write for the Oscars. And you were like, you got mad at me for apologizing. <laughs> I was like, what, what would you even say yes for if you was working on the Oscars? Girl, you are you have surpassed Kev on stage and friends. This is not an Oscar-worthy performance. This is you trying to make it performance. You clearly have made it. I was like, that's I don't know if that's the right thing. I don't know that I, I was so confused. Yeah, but that's a real comic that shows how much you love doing stand-up. Like you exactly. hate. You hate missing gigs no matter I hate canceling on people. Like, Especially I hate um, right to go Me sit too. and write, you know, for Salma Hayek to say something half funny. And and <laughs> Kim, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I can speak for Andrea uh, Ambria about this is it, it ain't always as glamorous sitting in them writing rooms and, and, and writing. Sometimes you'd rather be on stage somewhere than sitting in Really? Rooms. Yeah. <laughs> I already I already know I would rather be on a stage. Yeah, in the writing room. Yeah. It's hard. Oh, uh, I that. wrote for All Deaf. Now that I think about it, that's the only thing I ever wrote for, or like that All Deaf Movie Awards, the second one. Boy, that was a uh, that was a wild time. <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> like that, <Boy>. wild time. <laughs> Didn't even get a credit for that. They just paid me two hundred dollars or something like that. And All Deaf was a crazy line. company. I don't know who was behind that. A bunch of crooks, if you ask me. You know what's crazy, Ron? <laughs> What's that? That's that's the origin story. Oh, me and Tommy no. Davis is following. Oh up. no, Ron. Oh really? I didn't. I I feel like I'm. You might have told me this or something. What did he did he say? Fuck you or something? I I, I forget. That's 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 sad. It's too bad. Tommy they made me go talk to. Is not that serious. You say what, Tony? Your beef with Tommy Davidson is not that serious. I'll sock you out next time I see you. On Mama's, I will. You need to do it on you really cared about. You need to do it on 7-Eleven hot dogs. I'll sock you out. I'll be like, oh, shoot, Tony, you done did it. You done did it. He don't put stuff on 7-Eleven unless he mean it with his whole heart. <laughs> What's the Tommy Davidson beef? 
Oh, no, Ruben. You don't want to know. I, I want to know. Give us the cliff notes. Yeah. Tell him to be, please. Tell him to be. Tommy Davidson came to me after my performance at the second annual All Deaf Movie Awards. I was I was just the crowd warm up, but you know, as a crowd warm up, nobody knows you, so they ain't listening to you. So stop doing material. Started just doing crowd work, saved it a little bit, but you know, I really didn't care. I was in it for the check. Came off stage, Thomas and Day- Tommy Davidson was like, "Woo, Nick, you suck." And I guess what? somebody got to do it, but shit, shouldn't have been you. <laughs> what? That's very mean. Wow. You know what? That is kind of rough, though. Wow, yeah. Rough. It, it doesn't sound yeah, like... Tone, was... I, when you said that, Tone, I was like, I absolutely would have beef for the rest of my life. You he just apologize. said it again? That, yeah. yeah. The reason why he would have so... said you bombed, that's different from just saying you're bad. Yeah. But... Oh. Uh, I saw him I saw him a couple weeks later. No, I saw him some time later on a flight. He dropped his bags off. Cause he just walked past me and he came back and tried to kneel down and talk to me. So, like, hey brother, I saw you the other day. And I was just trying to let you know comedy's a marathon. You know, you keep you keep going until you get it. And I was like, hey man, you should probably go back to your seat so they can close this little this little curtain. <laughs> wow, <for you. laughs> Let's go to the next I feel like that was his. I don't give a fuck about that olive branch, Ron. I wasn't ready to that's not be mad no more. Okay. I wasn't ready to not be mad no more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's next fair. time I saw him. We were in the airport in Texas, I think. It was me, Kev, our, our homie Josh, and then Tony Baker. So Tony, we stand up to go board. And, and Tony Baker sees Tommy Davidson. He said, like, oh, what's up, Tommy? What's going on, man? And Kev is in between me and Tony and, and Tommy Davidson. I didn't see him, right? But Kev smiles. He looks at me. He's like, hey, to here. It's Tommy Davidson. And I say <laughs> loudly, I don't fuck with that nigga. Loud oh, enough wow. to hear me, because I want him to say 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 some nigga, say some. Uh, what Kev? What are you doing? Now you got on to hear about his tiny mic, and he's sitting there picking this invisible afro. What's going on with you, brother? Like, oh man, you got like most things in life, you got to see it before you before you see it, Ron. Right? Okay, fine. I mean, you didn't just start off with that afro, man. Pro and picking it out like it's his. That's really what I'm impressed with. I'm like, nah, man, I could, I could do this. The second time wouldn't have been as bad, but Kev tried to start some shit. That's why he was like, hey, to here, it's Tommy Davidson. Kev tried to be petty and set it up like that. Kev well, here's the thing it. that I learned about to hear that day that I, I never made this mistake again. Most people will be like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be polite. I ain't going to say nothing. First of all, to hear when he tells the story, he don't realize, he don't say that I say my part quiet. Nobody could hear me but to hear. I'm like, hey, there go your boy. <laughs> That's what I do, Ron. I'm messing with to hear. Not mm-hmm. Tommy cannot hear me. I'm with to hear. To hear, he the one that elevates it to where the gate agent's like, who? And I'm like, okay, you are out of your mind. First yeah, of all, had to hear, just had a brisket sandwich. <laughs> was it was that the same? Was that the same weekend? Because the brisket sandwich makes you violent. In the- <laughs> was that the same weekend, y'all? I'm I can't very remember. big on principle. Very big on principle. And I don't I don't take kindly to disrespect, like at all. I get towards it. me or towards my friend. Kev told me some stuff today, somebody said, and I was like, oh, he got me fucked up. I bought, I pulled out my phone to call him. He's like, stop, don't do that. He wasn't even talking to me. But you disrespect me, you disrespect my friends. I'm I'm gonna be I'm I'm Cleo. I'm pulling up riding oh, hard. Like, he was dead serious, and I was like, I was bro. dead serious. <laughs> so he like, got a forced earth like, policy for his enemies. I just don't, I don't yeah. say that shit. You don't talk bad about me and my because it's my thing. Like, and here's the thing that Kev had to, to, to tell me about that situation. Like, the person said some wild, some something wild to Kev, but like Kev was like, at least I know why I stand with that person. He just sugar Cody, let me know, and I was like. That's cool. I can respect that. And that's what made me calm down. Cause like I was just gonna call a motherfucker after Kev walked away anyway. Like I was <laughs> that's the type of person I am. But I ain't gonna I'm hold you to here and both Tony. You know, we got a group chat and there, there's some stuff that's been thrown my way. I'm not in the comedy community in LA like Tony and to here. My wife didn't let me go out to the clubs like that. So I don't have the repertoire with a lot of comedians like that. 
So I be telling Tony to hear what be happening, and they both have been like, I'll say something right now. Matter of fact, um, let me call them right now. So it's always good to have friends like that who be like, nah, man, if you ain't cool, if we ain't, you ain't cool, we ain't cool. But I don't expect that of y'all, but I do appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Because this city could be, you know. That's, I mean, that's that's real friendship. You know what I mean? I yeah. Mean, that should be done, especially, like you said, if you're not really in the local LA scene like that and to hear Tony R, you know, you ride for your friends like that, regardless. I listen, so, I appreciate that yeah. a lot. Because, you know, you LA, know what? Go ahead, Ron. <laughs> well, I wanted to say this to you for some time, but I just always forgot or whatever. But long story short, in December, uh, or leading up to December, I was getting ready to go to jail. Well, I did, but I was getting ready to. And uh, and it, it, I ain't going to sit here and say, oh, the rough time is not like I was getting ready. I, I just got a slap on the wrist. But I, I really didn't know. I didn't really know what to think or think about. I, I had nothing. Long story short, uh, Righteous and Ratchet and some of your other projects, I really started fucking with that. I was fucking with it like every day. And it was like just, it was just tightening my mind up for like just owning up the fact that I did some fuck shit and I got to do this. And it made me, I was, I was watching when I got out and it was just very, very good. And I just started, I mean, I know you, but I started going down all your stuff and it was just wonderful. And the fact that, you know, you put the things together and oh, it's just wonderful. It was beautiful. Got me through a very rough time, very weird time. And I thank you for having that stuff out there, dog. Well, thank you, Ron. I, I did not know that. That no, was I very bet. surprising information. You gave me a lot yeah. at once. I didn't know about the jail stuff. I'm still <laughs> oh, <feeling. yeah. laughs> Especially when somebody says, I was getting ready to go to jail. Well, I did go to jail, but I was also in the process of getting ready to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Casually, right? Listen, Listen, man, I'm going to yeah. tell you, as a comic or a content creator, the best compliment ever is your content helped me through a rough part of my life. That is like... You know, we, we, you know, and that's the one that's the hardest to take. People are like, man, my mom was either sick or had just passed or, you know, whatever. And I just sat and watched, like, that's what I like the most about stand-up comedy. When you are on that stage killing, no matter how bad that person's life in the audience, your brain cannot process that joke and laughter and think about the bad thing that's mm -hmm. happening to you. So for those 45 minutes, you killing, people really leave the, the club like, man, you know, I feel nothing in their life has changed except you made them laugh and that people be leaving like, man, that was, you yeah. really, you know, that 45 minutes, it was, that's what been real comedians, man. Yo. It used to be to hear, tone, me. These people used to be like, bro, I really had, I couldn't laugh no more. After that show, I really had nothing else to laugh. Like y'all really took my whole mind away. And that to me is the most important compliment is yeah. you distracted me from bad, bad things. Look! Look at the chat. Look at all the hashtag Kev saved my it, life. Man. Come on, man! I, I gotta go. Uh, Yo. Kristen Mays, uh, Kristen Mays just hit me in the cash app, but it's not about the cash app. It's about her kind gesture. She sent something to our office for me and Kev. She does wire work, like with like copper wire and other type of wire, and she sent some crowns to the office today. And what well, we got them today, they were so amazing. And the crowns and the pins. Uh, her name is Christian, K R I S T I N E M A Y S, and I think she's on um, on Instagram. But um, amazing young lady, an amazing talented person uh, out of Florida, and she does outstanding work. So if you want to get someone a great gift, uh, definitely hit her up because I am just. Super impressed by your work. So thank you so much, Miss Mays, for that. So and Kev saved my life too, guys. Okay. Kev fired me and hired me all in within two months. And let me tell you, <laughs> let, me, Yo. let, me, let me tell you how God worked. Kev told me on a Monday to save my job, he was gonna have to end the show. Oh my, how the many show that I got hired to do, right? And so I went that whole week knowing that my show was going to be over. But Ruben don't know the story, Kev. I don't know. So, the story. so this 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 happened. This happened 2017, right before the holidays. <laughs> amen. So 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 Friday gets there. Amen. It's the last day of the job. The last day, last day of the show. At this point, I'm going to start writing and start hopping the sketches, but I, I really don't know what's going on. Amen. But I know I still got a job and I still got insurance. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, 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 so soon as we yell cut, amen, 
Kev comes in and he does this. Can I talk to you for a second? And and we all know. I said no, 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 no. no. We all know that this has never ended with a good conversation. Amen. So Kev takes me in the office. We go in the office. He said, "Hey, there's nothing you could have done. You done everything right, okay? But you fired." I say, "What?" He said, "You fired. Get your shit and get out of here." Those were oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and and wow. something came over me. To like fuck everything in this office up. But I said, no, no. Then God said, just ask him one question. My one question was, when does my insurance end? Because I need to get my teeth fixed. That's all I asked him. That's all I asked him. And literally a month later, he asked me to host his tour. And 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 there it is. Look at God. Won't he will? Won't he will? Won't he do it? Part of the story that Tahir never tells because it it, it, it it won't fit the narrative of his lie. <laughs> So it looks like we have audio problems with Kev on stage. It's almost time to get out of here anyway, guys. It's been a fantastic show. I want I want to tell y'all, man, this has been an amazing show. Great way to end out the year. Um Christ. It's, it's been fantastic. Let me say that. Uh, uh here, real quick, before you wrap it up. Yeah. Can I tell the people how I met these comedians up here? Real yes, quick. I would love real to know how you met them. We talked about hot dogs for the whole goddamn episode, but you know what? That's neither here nor there. <laughs> Ruben Paul, Ruben Paul, I met him at the Ha Ha Cafe. I was fresh in the comedy game, and he went up there and delivered like the vet he is. And I was just like, man, I too would like to be this confident and good on the stage. He talked to me and treated me like, because you know how some veteran comedians they might you know kind of dismiss the new cat. But he talked to me like he had known me for like years already. I was like, man, this dude, I felt like I knew him. I was like, maybe I met him years ago and I just forgot we was friends. So ever since then, we've been mad cool. And he's always my go-to mentor because anytime I got a question about a booker or a rogue, I'll be like, hey, Ruben, man, what's up with this, this, that, and the third? He always know people. He'd be like, well, when they booked me at that club, you know, she was always cool, this, that, and the third. And I was just like, then he took me on the road in Sacramento, introduced me to, uh, what's her name? Molly? Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, man, Reuben Paul. So, I, you know, <laughs> if he can jump, I'm jumping in, you know, on some, on some straight street fights. You know, Reuben, Reuben is my guy. Ron Taylor, I met him in Detroit. We out there and... Um, he was, I saw him, uh, I forget, was it at Baker's we were at, or? We uh, met in Detroit? Was it Detroit or Cleveland? It definitely wasn't Cleveland. I think it was. You came to do. I came to do Nichelle's, the, Nichelle's show. Other show. Right. Yeah. That was at the uh, Jazz Cafe. Yes. He's a Jazz Cafe. Yeah. I was like, this dude right here. Because so, everything was gritty where we was at. Everybody was gritty. They was on stage like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They was on stage yeah. cracking jokes, had the pistol in the pants. You know, women had the pistols in their purse. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ron went up there. He was gritty in street, but he looked like Ron. And I was just like, yo, man, this dude is refreshing visually. I was just like, Ron, man, this dude funny. And then when you moved to L.A., I was like, <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Ambria Allen. I seen her for the first time. Uh, actually, it was a recorded set that they had done. Uh, you were early. You were early in stand up too, but you already had a tape set on this uh, thing. I don't know if you remember that joint. It was probably your first taping. The comedy wings thing for ABF or the Aspire TV thing. I, I think it was that. And I was just like, yo, who is this? She is mad. Then I found out you had just started. And I was like, how is she this crisp, <laughs> this fast? And then, you know, um, I met you through David Arnold and them. And then I was like, yo, this, this woman right here, yo, this right here. And I was just like, yeah. And ever, ever, ever since then, I've been like, hey, yo, Amber, you know, do my show. I'm always hitting her up. Hey, 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 hey. Do my shit. You busy? You writing for the Oscars? That's great. That's great. Listen, <laughs> I got a show. It pays twenty five dollars. <laughs> After you wrap the Oscars up, pull up. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a hot. She be pulling up. She be pulling up. So, 
And y'all already know the me, Kevin, to his story. I don't know how we met Tony, man. Tell it from your point of view. Well, let's, well, let's, get, well, let's get it in there. So Nate Jackson <laughs> had a show uh, that he would do in Tacoma, Washington, the biggest comedy show in the region. And uh, Nate Jackson was like, yo, Tony, man, I want to fly you out to do my show. I was like, yes, please, Nate Jackson. I need every morsel. So um, flew out there and he had the show. I forget which ven venue he was at the time. So I see Kev go up, and Kev, I was like, yo, Kev, this dude right here. I wasn't thinking Kev. I was just like, this dude right here. He was up there. He had his glasses on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and this, this, is, this is skinny Kev. You know Come what on, saying? man. Don't bring that part up. <laughs> it was a dark he was young. He was like, he was fixing his glasses on stage. He was like, you know, I got two sons and my wife. And I was just like, yo, this, this dude's me, you know? <laughs> And I was just like, I like this guy, man. He did, he he ripped, and that wasn't even an easy room to rip in because that, that room they be in there, yeah, you know, say 40s and if you ain't bringing it, they're gonna have conversations amongst themselves. And they gonna but, turn to the side on you. Oh, they be like, oh, yeah. yeah, I told Reggie, I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how you gonna keep <laughs> I told, I said, bitch, listen, I ain't turning my bag in. I turned it in. I'm with the customer service. Yo, oh, they still doing comedy. Wild, man. Was, the back I, third of that room, they were at a totally different event than the comedy show. Man, they didn't care. <laughs> Kev was bringing it. He held their attention. I was like, I like this guy right here. I told him, I was like, man, that was funny, man. He was like, thanks, man. And then you might have left. I don't think you stuck around because Melissa, oh, yeah. Melissa wasn't. Melissa yeah. had saw the pictures that came out of Nate's room. Uh -huh. And we was dressed for the club. And she was like, the moment you finish that set, you better be on your way home. So I would be like, <laughs> no lie. Ruben, I am not joking. She saw because Nate, one of his biggest marketing things, this is when only Facebook was popping. And, the, and there used to be a club after the show. So the women would come dressed for the club. They go to the show and then immediately go to the club basically after party. And I'm a church kid, so I never was like around that. And they was loving the set. They take pictures and she, and you know, Facebook used to tag you. It would post a picture like it was you. <laughs> Woo! She was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, what are you oh. Doing? What so are you this doing? is what you be doing with your little jokes. <laughs> I mean, it was boobs and butt everywhere. Yeah. From Nate's that point on, I, I, I was like, hey, Nate, I cannot stay for no pictures. She was not happy. I would sneak out the hey, back. Kev, Kev, I'm quick, telling y'all. Where, where are you from, Kev, real quick? My dad's in the military, so I, 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 the story's kind of convoluted, but I was born in El Paso, bounced around uh, North Carolina, Virginia, back to El Paso. But then I spent 13 years in Washington. So I, I could either say from El Paso or from, from Tacoma. Gotcha. And when I tell y'all Kev was on his way out of there, when I complimented his set, I was like, yo, man, that was funny. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> he was out of there. He dove in the whip. I, saw, I looked out the window. He dove in, mashed <laughs> up. He ran over a homeless dude's shopping cart and kept going. I was like, man, he uh, I used to watch the headliner close. And when Nate went back to close close, I would always leave right then. That's why I like... I learned as much about comedy watching everybody. Good people have bad sets, bad people have good sets, but I could not stay for the pictures no more. So I always watched the comedy, but as soon as he was like, that headliner went off, I was like, back door, back door, skirt. <laughs> my so wife, wild. like all jokes aside, my wife was not laughing no more. She was pissed. Hilarious. Because of the pictures? Because of women. <laughs> women. Oh, okay, um, okay. Women in the and you know when you're drunk, you're a little bit more loose with where your hands are placed and stuff. Woo. I I guess I mean that was yeah. in the pictures behind the women, like <laughs> yeah, comedy guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you was just taking pictures, huh? And he was like, Yo, I was taking pictures like this, man. Hey, man, I had a good. It's just you know the Keanu so Reeves. Like, How'd you mean to hear? So to hear all that stuff. How'd you mean to, oh, hear? to hear? Okay, so you know what? I, I'm not. I'm foggy on when I actually met to hear. Don't remember. I remember the first night. Cause I, I feel like I've known him so long. It was just like, man, when was the first? The first night we met was at um, Gardena. Bar and Grill. 
Gardena uh, Lounge. Oh, wow. Sign, uh, yeah, yeah. It's Gardena, Gardena Lounge. Lounge. Yeah, on okay. Sunset. And uh, there was my first open mic. Second, second open mic. I go there, and I'm just chilling in the back. I don't know nobody. I, I've been in L.A. for a week, right? It's Clayton Thomas, uh, Tony Baker. I think Donovan might have been there. And maybe it, it might have been Mikey or uh, Deshaun, one of them, right? And so Tony Baker, yeah, nobody's there. No, nobody except comedians are there. I don't yeah. know none of these things. And the bartender. And Ke mm -hmm. Keto is like, y'all, y'all make sure y'all take care of the bartender since she's giving us a little spot for free. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> listen. King Keto, oh, you know, he's doing all of this, and I'm just like, this yeah. is weird. Oh, I'm pretty right? good. I'm, just like, no, I'm looking at all these niggas, like all these niggas, weird as fuck, bro. So, dang. Tony goes on, he does his thing. Clayton does his thing. Everybody does their thing. And after each person sits down, that rips. I go up to him, I'm like, yo, yo, my name is Tahir, man. I'm new in town. I ain't got no friends. Can I get your number? You said and that. That's literally how. And you, I, and you call them weird? Yeah, <laughs> but they could feel they could feel the real nigga coming off of me, Kim. So they know <laughs> the real the nigga. They 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 could feel it because I was like I was hella real with the shit. I was like, "Yo, I'm new in town, my nigga. I don't know nobody. Can I get your number? Your shit was funny too, by the way. You gotta hit you gotta hit him with the your yeah. shit was funny too. He had a hot dog in his hand it. too. He was like, "Man, that <laughs> shit was that shit was off the chain." Tell him, hey, my name is Tahir. I'm new in town. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's say we go get some glizzies. I don't know. <laughs> anybody, bro. I don't know anybody. And I just like, fuck it. Because it's hard to make friends after like, after 25 or like 30. You don't know nobody, bro. You don't have a regular job. It's hard to make friends. So I was just like, I'm just going to put myself out there. I'm going to be vulnerable. They either going to say yay or nay. But it is what it is, nigga. I ain't got no friends. What's up? What y'all like Wait, to how do? How old were you when you started? I, I started like right after college, but I didn't take it seriously until I moved out here. So I was doing mm -hmm. shows in St. Louis, like hosting stuff and shit like that, and going to open mics and doing little shows. I was going by comedian Rob Moore. Like I wasn't taking it seriously. Yeah, like, well, I know, right? Whose name is that? <laughs> That's the real that? name. His name. That's his real name. Oh, wow. oh. oh there you go. <laughs> oh, -ho! yo, wow. yo. Wow. Wow. wow! Look how Cam look, man. Melissa wow. looks exactly the same, though. You are oh, wow. a piece of crap to hear. <laughs> Get off my wow. Facebook. I was such a confused person. I wanted to prove I was from Texas so bad. I wore the belt buckle, the Texas Longhorn stuff. It was a whole, oh, come on. If this is rude. Oh, shit. You know what, though? I guess we do kind of look alike. Because when they say that in the videos, I never understand it. Well, I got pictures with all these poses. Like, I've done all these poses. <laughs> Why are you doing this with the cell phone? And Tony, I don't know what was happening. Look at, I was hey, so Tony, look at this one. Tony, look, this one is tossed. The cell phone is tossed. He yeah. threw it up in the air and was like, ah, I'm going to catch it. <laughs> that was a real choice. They was like, I'm going to throw it up. If you can catch it like in midair, that's going to be dope. I was so proud of this dog on black. He looked like Bob. Wow, right? He, he looked like Shad. Like, give, like, give, give me something like you text him. Like, what you text Melissa right now? He's like, I'm hungry right now, girl. I'm. Why would you do this? Now he he telling Melissa, I'm on, I'm on my way. There are no there are no girls here, Melissa. Listen. I'm on my way. We're just taking pictures. <laughs> Look at Jason. Look at Jason's Yo. face right. <laughs> Yo, yeah, Cam was like Bow Wow in that last picture though, where he's looking down at the phone. This wait, was, wait a, minute, this was a what? magazine uh, shoot where in Dallas, Texas, picture? bro. We were so doggone proud. Somebody wanted the magazine, shoot us for that magazine. Magazine never came out. All we ever got was these pictures. <laughs> we went to, no lie, we went to a Luby's after this and had lunch. Luby's? Wow. Y'all was the youngest ones in that mug. Oh, Tom, we didn't have no bread. Luby's was super cheap during the day. It was like five bucks. The Playmakers. To hear, it looked like those pictures were saved to your desktop. Yeah, where'd you get those? <laughs> <laughs> like you didn't have a browser open. Like I, 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 I screenshot them off of my phone and I, I airdropped it to my computer. So that's why they were in, they were in there, Ambria. Why are you trying to be funny? Okay. <laughs> Ambria ready to go. She got that. Listen, anytime 
And he's on somebody sit like this. Hey, leg up. Right, leg up. Wrap it up. Ready to go. Let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and wrap it up real quick. Uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go Kev on stage, and then we'll go uh Ryan T, and then we'll go Ambria, and then we'll go Ruben, and then we have Tony close it out. Now, nah, Tony, tell us how you met yourself first. What was it as a baby or <laughs> yeah? I came out my mom, I was 10 pounds, so I had an outfit on already, right? Yeah, and so yeah, when you're 10 pounds, you come with the clothes. Were you really 10 pounds? Yeah, I was 10 pounds. Really? Dressed. I was dressed already, man. Had a complete <laughs> shirt, short set, and I had sneakers on. You know the hard white baby shoes from back in the day? I had them on. Came out, came out feet first and my shoulders. <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there, man. You know what I'm saying? Who uh, takes all I want to say is right now, the most important thing in uh, I'm working on is the Kev on Stage Studios. Kev, it's not your turn. It's not your turn yet. I thought you said Kev. No. No. Yeah, no, you said cap. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, you definitely said my name. He is. Oh, wow. Man. Down, man. <laughs> I was like, dang, did I step over somebody? I thought you for sure said me. I did. I apologize. <laughs> All right. So, uh, kind of killed my whole vibe. I had a whole momentum thing going. <laughs> anyway, the Cam on Stage Studios app, uh, it, it, it's out now. It fully launches on Christmas Day. Shout out to everybody. We got 10,000 subscribers, which is, I just want to say something real quick, though, Black people. Let me just stop doing the math. You, too many of the comments is, is multiplication. Don't worry about all that, because it ain't what you think. <laughs> that money not going into nobody's pocket, I promise you. Every dime going back into the business. So, though, y'all, you know how black, well, you over here getting it, brother. You understand me? No, no, it ain't like that. We got a lot of bills. It's a five year lease. Trust me, the money's gone. It's spent. <laughs> a lot of stuff to do. Don't do that. Just get the app and believe in us. Don't worry about what it's going to. It's going to the bills. If we ain't taking no disbursements from out of there for a long time, the only way to make a business work is to make the money and put the money back into the business, okay? This is a bad, this is a back into the business. We ain't taking no dividends, no payouts for a long time. But anyway, get the Get On Stage Studios app. You know, uh, we are building a place for creators like us who are digital creators who haven't had proper access to Hollywood. I mean, these people are talented. People on this panel today on Zoom with the homies, you know, people who've been writing for the Oscars who should be the ones performing for the Oscars, our app is to let these people shine like they should. And then hopefully, because you know how Hollywood be, then they when they see you rocking, then they'll be like, oh, and then they'll get their proper pay. Not going to come from us. The proper pay is not going to come from us. <laughs> the exposure yeah. and, the, and, the, and the fair pay, you know, for what we're trying to do, that pay going to come from us. But the tens of millions, at least initially, not going to come from us. So if you want to rock with us, sign up uh, $5 a month on every platform. Me, Tony Tahir, and Angel got a show coming out. Real Comedians, a social media challenge show coming out on Christmas. Very excited about that. Uh, Keep Your Distance comedy show. The, the edited version is, is already two episodes out on there. So please support us, support comedy, and stop counting the money because I promise y'all, y'all don't want to see the bill. I guarantee you, you do not want to see the bill. We got to hire whole people, wall insulations. You won't even believe how expensive it is to soundproof a warehouse. All the way to the top and on the roof, God Almighty. I said, man, why do we do this? We signed the lease. <laughs> Jesus I'm Christ. sure that's hard, though. I'm sure that's hard. But it's, Ooh, it's, it's, it's I said, a hold on. Before we even make, I was talking to them today, and I'm going to shut up. I was like, we should shoot this. And they was like, first of all, we can't shoot nothing until we soundproof the whole place and rig mm -hmm. the lights. You can't shoot till March. Huh? So Dang. please get the app and stop doing the math. Don't worry about the math. It ain't what you think. <laughs> it ain't what you think. That's, you know? But that's our favorite thing to do as poor people, Kev. I know. I that's why I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to talk I about, guess. after we hit 10,000, Ryan, I'm not going to talk about numbers no more because people getting distracted, You, you, their eyes off the mark. Don't worry about the that because I promise you, because then we go into the bills, you're going to be like, well, dang, y'all ain't got nothing, which is what I'm trying to tell you. Well, see, it might be, it might have been a while since you were poor, but let me tell you, as a poor person myself, we don't care about your bills. That's not what we fantasize about. And I'm like sitting there like, damn, I can't wait to have bills like Kev. We're just doing mad. Like, this nigga got what? He driving a Maserati? So, you know, we, that's what, <laughs> that's our favorite thing to do. You're going to have to put up with a little bit of that. But yes, you all should get the app. I'm going to do the yearly plan. So, 
Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Most definitely. Oh, it's my turn. Okay, so me, um, shit. Oh, my fucking follow me that you know, follow me on Instagram. And uh, oh, uh, I wonder, can I say this? Yeah, because the press release came out. I'm in a pilot. I shot a pilot. Hey, all um, right, Ron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, yeah, I got something. Huh? Look at me. I shot a pilot. So if it, I don't know what you're supposed to do next or what I'm supposed to wait for. But if it come out and get picked up, which I believe it will, check it out. And uh, what's it called? Uh, tentatively, it's called. I don't know. I, if I get in trouble, I, I, I shot already. Uh, right now, it's called None of the Above. That that's a what do you call it? A working title? None yeah. of the above. It's got um some people in it. Check it out. It's it's great. Uh, that is going on and uh, getting back out there and staying up and putting up some content and things like that. But I just want to say this to everybody right now or everybody on here. A lot of the stuff you all do, everybody on here. Uh, that you guys are doing is it's been very very inspirational and it's it's just to see the fact that like I was telling my mother like a couple of days ago especially with all deaf I was like fuck all deaf I used to just feel that because I was like I'm a real comedian these are clowns and now all of you guys are famous and rich and it's just I I don't think I ever hated but now I realize like these niggas really not bullshit and they just they own, they jamming on the one, and I'm over here waiting for the stage to open back up. Like I'm a real comedian. I don't fuck with the internet, mind you. I'm younger than everybody here right now, but I'm like, I don't fuck with that internet shit. And now you guys are wonderful and rich, and it's very inspired, and I love it all. Ron, your honesty is refreshing. You are <laughs> refreshingly honest. That nigga openly said, "I was, I hated y'all." Wait, hold on. You guys are doing what now? Well, damn. yeah, yeah. You know, you can't be a you can't be a hater incorrectly, and it was it wasn't even like real hate. It was just like you know, I'm not doing that. I'm better than them, and boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> doing it now. You know what, Ron? A lot of people agree with you, and they will never say that out loud. <laughs> right. Real talk. Yeah. Real talk. Hmm. All right, uh, let's go, Ambria. What you got for the people? Um. I'm writing on the last OG, so that'll be next spring. You can watch the next season of that. Or this, yeah. um, and you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Ambria. There's some content on there, some funny stuff, and I'll be at the show tomorrow. You gonna feel horrible about your decisions on what you dress in because Ambria literally gets styled <laughs> by Vogue magazine. Okay, so don't try yeah. to compete with her because you're going to lose badly. All she do is kill them. I wish you wouldn't tell people that so they can send me more money mm -hmm. on Cash App. Um, <laughs> if you did oh. send me anything, thank you so much. I didn't, I remember the first time I did this show was with, <laughs> to hear, remember it was with Buddy Lewis, Kim Whitley, David Arnold, Chris Spence. It was just. It was mayhem. It was. It was, <laughs> it was revenge of the Old niggas talking over <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> they were talking over each other? It was Clubhouse. No, they hated it. It, it was oh, Buddy Lewis would come in out of nowhere. Buddy Lewis would be like, and then that nigga said. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, you know, back at the Golden Cat. Buddy like, is the wow. Golden Cat. <laughs> the Golden Cat is the Golden Cat. Can I say something? Can I? Can I? Wait your turn. <laughs> No, so, um, so I didn't know that like people are generous. Thank you for being generous in a time when it's like very difficult to be. So I appreciate everybody for watching and 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 giving. So, and I appreciate all of you. And I'm happy to see you all tomorrow. So, Amber, this will be the last show until well, I'm doing a show, a special edition show on fr uh, Saturday, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But in January, when I come back, hit me anytime. I don't give that extension to any uh, to a lot of people. But you're one of the people who I feel like did not get the 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 proper feel for what the show is the first time. And I've always wanted to get you back. But like like Kev, I was like, nigga, she right for the Oscars. She don't want to be on this ratchet shit. Like we ain't here talking about 7 Eleven hot dogs for 45 minutes. It was more like an hour 15 here. It was yeah, a so I'm hour like, 15 like, on the hot dogs. Anytime, Amber. Y'all can't make those decisions for me. Y'all gotta <laughs> 
You gotta let me come. You gotta let me come. I but now I put the I put it out there. So anytime Emory, you, you like, got a PhD? Yeah. In what? I'm telling you. Huh? In what? She, she doesn't have to do stand up, Kim. What? Wow, that's crazy. What Damn. do you have a PhD in? Sociology. But thank Sociology? you. Sociology? Hmm? You have a PhD in what? Sociology. You're Dr. Oh. Ambria Allen? <laughs> wow, that's crazy. You don't go by that on stage, Dr. Ambria Allen? Come on, man, you earned that. <laughs> no. How, are you a vet? How, how did you do all this in life? Um, Dr. Allen? They go hard. Yeah, but you know, it'd be hard. It'd be hard to get on stage. You know, people already don't want to like you. You know, they oh, put this. Dog. They yeah. come out. Listen. That would be my writer credit. My my writer name would be under Dr. Ambria Allen. I love funny. how much black people love a title. Like black oh, people. Listen, love Ambria, people. in the church, okay. in the church, pastors will take the honorary doctorate and will you better call me Dr. Allen. You they ain't oh, even go to no class. Doctor, Reverend yeah. Doctor. Yeah. Listen, that's honorary doctorate. Somebody at the college was just like, we like you. And then Dr. Allen now. You actually <laughs> are. You have a PhD and you just go by your name. Yeah, yeah. that seems like a waste. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of homework to do to not get the sweetest thing out hey, of this fuck thing, education. Hey, this you get the title. <laughs> Ron is the most Detroit nigga I've ever met of niggas from Detroit. Ron is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> ah, go yeah. wide. Shit. You're there now. The people who need to know know and us, you know, <laughs> I'm not hiding. Everybody needs to know, Amber. If you went to school for that long, everybody needs to know what you did with your time. You earned that. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tony, just bring her up tomorrow. Just bring her up as Dr. Allen. Like, give it up. Do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do <laughs> but I'm gonna ask first. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna make sure. I you think it's fine when other people say it. I think when you say it, it feels like I feel you're that. trying to be, and it it ain't got no place in a conversation. No, Ambria, you're in wrong. In a conversation about you know comedy. No, no, hey, no what's your name? I'm Monica. What's your name, Dr. Ambria Allen? You're already better than them. They gotta listen to whatever you say. You, After you can't. Well, you can't tell somebody, "Fuck you." What do you know? I'm a doctor. I know everything. All the things to know, I know them because I'm a doctor. I think like to hear. I'm a nigga, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> you, put, you put ER at the end of that. It sounded like you put an ER no. at the end of that. No. <laughs> I just put my hand on my chest so you you saw the ER. Okay. <laughs> it's a trick. It's, it's a mirage. <laughs> With that joke, I understood why you're a doctor writing for the Oscars <laughs> and writing for the last OG. That was a well-placed joke. <laughs> oh. I don't like extra, so I don't Black ever- women, women, man. It's greater than sign. Black, Black women. women, man. Come on. Magic. Black girl magic. I love y'all. Thank y'all. What you good. got for him, Ruben? Uh, first of all, let me just say I have respect for everybody in the Zoom. Uh, meeting Kev for the first time, but I've watched you from afar, brother, and much respect. All love to Tone, Ron, to hear. Um, actually, this pandemic has been rough, but it's been good at the same time. I uh, created two shows. One uh, with me and uh, Godfrey created a show and uh, we shot two. Yeah. Shot, shot uh, pilots for both shows. The show with me and Godfrey is looking really good, so I won't speak on that too much. But okay, roll, 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 roll. Huh? <laughs> and then got another one that uh, people like, but if if uh, if they don't buy that one, then uh, we'll release it independently. So um, I just want to say to everybody who's watching in this pandemic, I know a lot of people have been struggling, but you can always start from some place to do what you really want to do because now we have more time than ever and some of these projects might have not come to fruition because if it wasn't for this pandemic so to be able to take advantage of that free time to create has been good for me i do miss stand up and and being on stage but to be able to create shows with your with your friends and then have people like them and get them out there has, has been a blessing so um just doing that and then um you know you can follow me on social media uh, my goal in 2021 is to be more active like you guys are as you know 
and just creating content. Because my generation really, it's hard to collaborate with old niggas to do anything <laughs> on, on social media. They, they hate- That should be the name of your next special, Ruben. <laughs> Bro, it's hard to collaborate with old niggas. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's just, everybody's just, it's that negative energy, you know what I mean? Instead of adapting yeah. and adjusting and celebrating just good art, no matter what platform it's on, people really want to take time to just shit on it because they're not doing it. But uh, I want to do more, so um, I might be picking y'all brains because I got ideas of things I want to do, but sometimes you just don't know how to execute them. So, but other than that, um, you know, I am Ruben Paul on social media and be looking for uh, a couple of projects that, uh, you know, that Yay. I've been working with. Ruben, I miss your show so much. On yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I miss doing it. Ruby Tuesdays was cracking, man. I miss man. doing it, man. I miss doing and it. I ain't get to do it. You, Ruby Tuesdays, yeah, and you back. never know who was going to roll up. It'd be George man. Lopez one night, DL one night, Chris Tucker one night. I was like, man, you got everybody <laughs> coming through here, man. It was like the yeah. show that they should have modeled actual diversity on at the Laugh Factory. It was like, so y'all only going to do these? Once a week, y'all not going They only gave a Sunday, you know what I mean? You know what? Let me just say this real quick. I don't want to take up too much time, but that's been my a whole battle. And Tony, Tony knows yep. this. It's like, I've always worked all different types of rooms. And I just thought a lot of black comedians weren't getting opportunities to be seen in front of different types of audiences. We're always re relegated to the black night, which is dope and which is needed. But there's a lot of dope comedians that could work on any night. So mm -hmm. I went to the owner and was like, I want to do a real diverse show. And I want to take comics who would never normally be on lineups together and put them on lineups together. So yeah. if you don't have a good set on my show, it's just because you're not good or you had a bad night. But, yeah. you're, but you have the opportunity because the audience is mixed across the board to really be who you are. You ain't got to adapt. You ain't got to look, oh, white people in the audience. I need to whiten up my act or black people in the audience. I got to be a little bit more hood. You can just be yourself. And the show was uh, successful. So I'm, you know, hoping this pandemic is, you know, wraps up quick so we can get back to doing what we love. All right. Yeah. I am hoping it, it sticks around a little longer because Keep Your Distance is really thriving off of the pandemic. So I'm going <laughs> the opposite thing. You know, <laughs> I'm joking. Wow. I want to go <laughs> so bad. I would just been like, it was a cool thing, but bro, I I want to leave. I want to be in a hotel with blue water somewhere. Oh bro. my god! As black people, are we are we all fuck the vaccine? Like, I just want to know what what I'm supposed to be on. What I do <laughs> secretly don't matter, but are we are we all fuck the vaccine? Is that where we at? I think we're I think we're all over the place. I think our in our intuition is we don't trust medicine because it ain't always done right oh, by sure. first. So let, let, let y'all go first and then we'll see. Because yeah. usually it's do it on us and then perfect it on us, do it on the other people. So now we I think we're fairly skeptical about being the first people on this because you know we, there's some times we've been first. A lot of modern medicine was built off of uh, violating black people. And oh, they want to sure. rush us to the yeah. front, like, hey, that ain't work out so well for us all the time. So I feel like we are are uh, fairly skeptical about being first. But so, so that's where we at as black people. Let them go first. That's where we at with it. Yeah, let's. It's like the iOS. Let's see if it's buggy. See what people talk about. <laughs> how that is, and then right. if it's cool for a minute, you know, then we'll see. We ain't gonna get the first, you know, iPhone. We won't go on iPhone four when they finally figure some stuff out. <laughs> Don, what you Tony. got for the people real quick? What I got for the people is Tony Baker and friends tomorrow. Yes. I want everybody, I want everybody in here right now to buy a ticket right now. I'm gonna put this link right here. Don't cash at me, cash at me this ticket purchase right there. <laughs> Boom. That way you get a fire show for $15. That's a steal. Yeah. Ruben Paul, Ron Taylor, Ambria Allen. Um, Kev on stage and Coco Brown. Come on, man. For 15, 15 dollars is a steal. It's high rate robbery. I want y'all to pull up, get that ticket right there. I'll put the link in there. Um, it's gonna be fire. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch y'all tomorrow. I'm excited about that. I'm very like, excited I'm, to watch y'all. Oh yeah, man, I'm excited. And uh these comedians right here that'll be on the show tomorrow, I asked them and they said yes. And I was just like, man, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because they could have been like, nah, Tone, nah, I ain't rocking with it. 
And they was like, yes. And I was like, man, yeah. thank you. Ru Ruben was like, man, anything your whole ass need. Like, wow. <laughs> oh, that's right. how we communicate. That's, that's how me and Ruben talk. That's how we talk. Oh. Hey, you know what's funny? I don't even know where that all started between us. Me oh, neither. Sudden, we just was, looked at each other like, Tony, Tony, Tony does that. Tony got the energy. <laughs> Tony got the energy. <laughs> Every <laughs> time. You be Every like, time. man. You see me a little whack ass picture. Be like, oh. <laughs> Every Tony time. running the light too. Let's let's be all. Oh, oh yeah, you want to take it there, Ruben? <laughs> you want to talk, talk about running the light? <laughs> you want to talk about running the light, Ruben? Okay. Let's, yeah. let's talk about Chris Spencer running the light. Nah, man, let's talk about Ruben Paul running the light like he getting chased by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Ran through all them lights, drove off a cliff. I'm like, all right, Ruben. Hey, cool. hey, but then when we had the bet, you had to pay me because I got off stage right on time. You did get off stage <laughs> off time. That's because I was watching you like a hog. I was standing on stage that night to make sure. <clears throat> but uh, y'all gonna love the show tomorrow. Thank you to everybody that's already gotten the tickets. Everybody that's about to get oh, one, I'm, I'm gonna put the link in there one more time. What you got, Ruben? Let me just put say this real quick. Tony's um, like a penny real quick. Thank you, thank you right to everybody there. who sent cash apps. I really appreciate it. Wasn't expecting it, and I know to give during this time is not easy. So thank you for all the cash apps. Much love. You yeah, know. same here. I can't really see anything because I'm on my phone, but this thing been jiggling and vibrating so i appreciate it all i wish there was a way to message people back when you accept it i haven't found it if Ooh. there is but i thank you all yeah well tell them what 7-eleven to catch you at <laughs> hey dog <laughs> shit your favorite one i'll pull up and do the nacho trick don't put the nacho cheese on the chips put it in the bowl and open the bag and you dip that bitch Oh, Ron, I'm going to try to find your um your badge tonight and bring it tomorrow. I can't promise everything. Oh, okay. But I'm, I just moved, so I'm going to look to see if I can find it, and I'm going to try yeah. to find it. Appreciate it. Got you. want to give a big shout-out to all the guests that came up tonight. Um, definitely appreciate you guys. Uh, it's going to be an amazing show. Make sure you grab your tickets already if you haven't. I want to also give a shout-out to Jamie. Uh... Jamie Q, uh, Tan, Tania, Omar, Deidre, Kim Younger, uh, J. Sierra, Habiba, uh, Anne Marie Despa. I appreciate you. She she shows a lot of love. Yeah. Uh, Chayla Flake is where I got the uh, the glasses from for the more my shout out to her. She I was her first big order, so thank you for allowing me to uh, be the test trial. I appreciate that. Uh, Kashana. Uh, Redora, Felicia taking the stage, Kristen, Young Deuce, of course, a shout out to the homie, Jaron Jones, Jamie, uh, and Adam at Rated Intimate. I appreciate you guys. Uh, listen, man, get your tickets to see Tony Baker and friends tomorrow. And Saturday, make sure you get your tickets to see uh, the last Zooming with the homies of the of the of 2020. Just to give you guys a heads up, again, more mob. You guys are completely free. General public, if you want to watch, it's just $5. Um, I have Ty Davis, CP, Pat, Kev, Meg, Tony, Jackie, Sydney, DC, Chris Spencer, Roy Wood, Junior, Leslie Jones, Spice Adams, Tone Bell, Takara, CT, Shantae, Keisha, BT, Tony Brown. A lot of people going to be in there. Everybody stopping by for five to ten minutes. Uh, Ruben, if you want to pull up, you're more than welcome. Ambria, the same with you. Ron T, also. Uh, I will send you guys an invite if you guys want to pull up. We're only everybody's only staying for like five to ten minutes, but this is a way for you guys to give them their flowers for all the endless entertainment they provided all year long. Uh, you want to, even though they only be here for five to ten minutes, their cash out would be up if you want to bless them with a little something. It's Christmas time, and I know everybody cannot give, but those that can, if you want to bless the people that put a smile on your face or love chuckling your life for that day or that week, this is the time that you can do that. Um, and I, I just want to make sure that my people have a proper platform to be able to be appreciated. And because I mean, a lot of times being a comedian is a thankless job and, uh, we get rewarded a lot of times by the laughter because the pay, you really cannot pay somebody for what the gift of laughter provides. And you got a lot of people up here who are making amazing strides. Ruben, like he said, just created two shows during the quarantine. Ron just shot a pilot. Ambria is a PhD holder and a writer for the mm -hmm. Grammys and uh, young OG. I mean, the last mm -hmm. OG Kev, Tony and myself and Angel. We have an app. I want to let y'all know I was doing a little stats. 80% of millionaires are the first generation. 
they saw something in themselves and people saw something in themselves and allowed them to uh, flourish and people supported them. And we cannot do this with you all, without you all through comedy, through acting. We need you guys support, whether it's watching the stuff or sharing the videos or tagging a friend in the flyers. We cannot do it ourselves. We have uh, countless talent, but we need people to entertain. So we appreciate everything that you guys have provided with us, provided us for this year with the platform and with people and eyes and all of that. Um, we just ask you guys to continue to ride with us. Continue to yeah, ride with us, and we appreciate y'all. Um, I feel like the pastor just won't let us go. Like church has been over <laughs> for thirty yeah. minutes. Kev, I know you ain't talking. You you did your sign off, and you came back in. That or was somebody else signed off. It's nine twenty six. Pastor, let us go. You know what? I, nice I, swear, I see you. I'm gonna sock you out too. You know I'm gonna punch you right in your kidney. You are gonna pee on yourself a little bit. <laughs> Uh, shout out to the Rewatch Game, the More Mod, Scary Squad. I appreciate all y'all, man. I love y'all. See y'all tomorrow at uh, Tony Baker Show. And then I'll see y'all on Saturday, too. Thank you to all my guests. Kevin, I hope you stub your toe on the way to the bathroom. Y'all be safe now. <laughs>